All right, fight fans, welcome in to Fury Challenger Series 8. All eyes are on the city of Houston for some other reasons, as you can see on my chest. But we're getting things started with Fury Challenger Series 8. And everyone is talking about this card because finally the man himself, Anthony Kassar, has found himself a fight. We're going to talk about that in a second. These guys are ready to get it going. I'm Raheel Ramzanli, joined by the Black Belts himself, Michael Alexander, and UFC veteran Alex Morono. And gentlemen, it is finally here. Anthony Kassar has found himself a fight. Yeah, Anthony Kassar, the 2019 Big Ten and National Champ Wrestling Champion out of Penn State, is finally here on Fury Fighting Championship. He finally found an opponent. He's got a good opponent tonight, but we look for you know this room to be electric whenever he comes out and then we look to see what kind of statement he makes here to put his imprint on fury fighting championship and the rest of the country watching and that's not even the main event because in our main event the juice is going to get loose the juice john yan is taking on eduardo alvarado alex this fight is going to be a fun one in the bantamweight division man we got a bantamweight banger in our main event brandon moreno teammate um eduardo alvarado is fighting always game john Giannis. john Giannis, we've seen on multiple fight of the night performances that's going to be a dog fight that's going to be a slug fest that's an awesome main event well let's get things started and unleash the fury here with the best dressed man in mma here he is wayne leggett hello fight fans we are live from escapade at imagine venues in houston texas this is fury challenger series eight alvarado versus Giannis. But first, please welcome to the blue border for your opening contest, Javier Cepeda. Uh-oh, Javier Cepeda calling the shot with the Stone Cold entrance. <laughs> hey, and he has the best on. I love it. Look at that, Javier 316. Oh, it's going to be that kind of day, guys. Man, we have such an interesting card here. We have flyweight fights, bantamweight fights, and then one light heavyweight fight. A really cool kind of mix of weight classes. And man, this opening bout, I've, I, you know, I actually fought, one of my guys fought this guy's opponent, Bustin' Justin. These guys are quick, they're scrappy. It's going to be a fun opening bout for sure. Yeah, Javier Cepeda, 3-1, 28 years old, fighting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Has some boxing experience also, so look for those nice, crafty hands on the feet. His last three fights have ended in the first round. And, the, and the, of course, the last fight being his first loss. He was 5-0 and as an amateur, so... Ninth fight, or nine fights in, his tenth fight total. A lot of good experience here from Javier Cepeda. Yeah, and let this fight set the spirit of what Challenger Series is about. Javier is 3-1, and one. his opponent is 2-0. and oh. I mean, some true prospects coming up. Also, the brother of Andre Quintana, who we know very well as well. So, the bullet. Yep, Javier Cepeda is inside for this flyweight showdown. Let's meet his opponent in just a second. Here he is, Wayne. Please welcome to the red corner, Justin Longoria. You hear the crowd reaction for Bustin Justin. Justin Longoria, 2-0-1. Not, that's not an area code. That's his record. Does have a draw <laughs> on that record, but two and zero oh so far, and coming off that nice win over Daniel Pete Michael. Yeah, and a matter of fact, the draw was in his debut. He has wins over uh, Daniel Pete, like you said, and Joseph Aguilar since. He was six and zero oh as an amateur, and four of those six fights were first round finishes. Bustin Justin Longoria is the real deal, and will come in there and he will lay hands on somebody, Alex. Yeah, yeah. Daniel Pete's one of my guys. I've done a lot of tape study on Bustin Justin, and man, he's good. When he fought my boy Daniel, he had improved so much fight to fight. He, he really gave my guy all sorts of trouble. Uh, ended up winning a decision, and I've actually been looking forward to seeing him fight again to see what improvements he's made even beyond that. You know, he's got a good record at 2-0. He's got a tough opponent tonight and Javier Cepeda. I mean, again, like I say, it's a really good opening fight, uh, opening fight for this card. These guys are fast, and these guys will throw down. You know, and you mentioned that both of these guys will throw down, and that's the exciting thing about this fight, going back watching Cepeda's fight, and of course the Daniel Pete fight, going back watching that. These guys want to keep it standing. And yeah. that is always a treat for the fans. We look at our tail of the tape brought to you by Powerhead Whiskey. A slight reach advantage for Longoria. The height advantage for Cepeda. Both guys did make weight for this flyweight bout. Let's get our official introductions. 
Ladies and gentlemen, your opening contest brought to you by Howler Head Whiskey is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury FC Flyway Division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. This mixed martial artist stands five feet seven inches tall and he weighed in at 126 pounds. Fighting out of Roswell, New Mexico, his professional record stands at three wins. Only one defeat. Here is Lights Out, Javier Cepeda! And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This freestyle fighter stands five feet eight inches tall, and he weighed in at a perfect 125 pounds. Fighting out of Lafayette, Louisiana, his professional record stands at two wins. No losses, one draw, here is Boston, Justin Longoria! Your referee in charge of the action, Professor Joe Solis. Professor Joe Solis with the first assignment here on our main card for Fury Challenger Series 8. Blue gloves for Cicada. Bustin Justin in the red. Bustin nice. Justin with a front kick to the face to open up. Nice little double jab cross from Justin. Lights out with a nice little low kick. Lights out doing a good job really being long with his punches. He's throwing that left hook as a check hook really well. Yeah, and Justin trying that, that left hand, overhand right combination Oh, he's tried it a couple times here in these first few exchanges. Nice busting, Justin being explosive, throwing those low kicks hard and well. Notice how he's kind of rotating that hip through, selling a fake kick, throwing it high, throwing it low. Ooh. I mean, we're looking at like eight low kicks. It's been less than a minute. Oh, Ooh. these guys are banging shins together. There's that front kick to the face. Lights out, putting some pressure on him. It's a great way to kill a kicker. Put some serious pressure on him. Man, these guys are throwing hard. Real, you called it. I'm telling you, there is something in the air tonight. I think all these fighters know that the world of MMA is watching for Anthony Kassar. All eyes are here in Houston. These guys are trying to make a statement as well. Yeah, in this 125 division, I mean, this is an important fight for either one of these guys to kind of see where they stand because... As you know, our 125 and 135 divisions are absolutely stacked. Notice Lights Out did check that kick and threw a right hook counter. Came up just a little short, but he really got Bustin' Justin moving out of the way. Good calf kick return there from Javier. Javier Cepeda taking a boxing match earlier this year as well, working on those hands. As you can tell, no indication from either guy taking this to the ground, as we mentioned. Both guys do want to throw down. Oh, a big right just misses, and another right <laughs> in return from Cepeda. We saw an overhand right get countered with an overhand right. Yeah, very rare uh, <laughs> counter combination there from, from these two guys. Alex, how is that when you know your fighters are out to make a statement? There's an energy in this building today. All eyes again watching Fury Challenge Series 8. What do you tell them? You know? Man, you gotta you gotta reel him in. You cannot let the bloodlust take oh, over. Oh, 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 from Justin. Oh, and he hits him again. Lights out, doing a good job recovering. He fires back, but man, he got cracked twice. Savannah so got hit so hard it made the cameras go out. <laughs> oh man. It was the left hook of Bustin Justin that found the mark. And he goes to the leg, man. Javier Spade has taken some damage in this first round. Big kick to the ribs there from Bustin' Justin. Smells the blood in the water. Under two minutes in our first round. And props to Javier. He got hit, oh, he got hit flush two times in the same spot with that left hook from Justin. Stayed upright, fired back, I mean. Oh, a nice oh. right hand <laughs> counter during a kick. Nice right hand over the top, good uppercut from Justin. Yeah, very entertaining fight so far. Both guys landing, both guys knocking the other one down. Our first tie-up of the fight here. 
this might just be a breather, right? More than anything. Nice. That was a nice little wizard, wizard toss there from Javier Cepeda. Yeah, Just beautiful job of using that wizard to stay out to the side and not, not let him get his weight over the top of him. Yeah, Justin had a nice little body lock trip going for him. But Cepeda just used that wizard to kind of throw Justin to his back as Justin does work his way back up to his feet. It's a high pace in this first round. Man, this seems like a 10-minute first round so far. <laughs> this thing's been back and forth. Under one minute left. Oh, man. Um, Justin's got to be careful leaning like that. Justin trying that front kick again, using it as a jab. He's kind of gotten away from those leg kicks, though, Alex. He probably should go back to those. You know, he did get put down with that right hand during that, that not set up kick. And, man, Javier, he's, he's, he uses his reach really well. He, he throws his punches at, like, their longest point. So if he can throw a punch as soon as Justin throws a kick, oh. he hits him with the right hand. And he can land right at the tip of the spear and just maximize damage. Ten seconds left. <laughs> Oof, man, these guys are throwing down. Literally might come down to the final second on who's going to steal this round, but that final flurry there from Cepeda might be enough. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I mean, that one, since both guys did damage with punches, that's a coin flip. I mean, I think Justin actually, I know there's two big left hooks, but man, Cepeda reacted so well and then ends up kind of dropping him with the right hand of his own. I mean, that's a coin flip if I've ever seen one. What a first round. We look at our highlights. Yeah, very back and forth. It started out with Longoria with those leg kicks. You said about eight in a row, Alex, and then it just built from there. But near about two-thirds of the way through the round, you saw Cepeda start to limp around just a little bit to try to keep weight off there. Longoria taking oh, advantage of it, oh. catching him with that big left hand. And then another one. Bang, I mean, right there. And then Cepeda comes back. From that point on, I think the fight was all Cepeda. From the time he recovered from that knockdown from Lagoria, I think Cepeda took the fight over, and I think it was about halfway through the, through, through the round. So you talk about an even match. Can they give a 10-10? Man, <laughs> you know what? I do believe they can. But yeah. And if you're just Lagoria, you, you rock him, and then he just brings himself right back in the fight, does Javier Cepeda. Looks wise, Javier Cepeda's got some knots on his cheekbones. Sure Longoria looks like the least damaged fighter, but round two starts exactly like round one ended. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking to head matchmaker Richard Burmaster before the fight. He said, look, both these guys are prospects are evenly matched, obviously, with the records being so close. But not only that, you, you mentioned their amateur records, Michael. 5-0 and oh versus 6-0. and oh. So both of these fighters are really really good i mean high level already and we see it on display here really good straight punches there from justin nice little slip and rip notice the difference in their head movement though like granted justin will get his head off center line but there's a lot of extra movement and honestly i do the same thing no <laughs> criticism here but man but cepeda he he's a little more you know acute with his slips notice it's just enough to get out of the way that's that boxing experience, Alex, I think, because, you know, as a boxer, you've got the little bit bigger gloves and, you know, those small head movements. You just don't want to take the, the punches from the center of the glove. So, uh, and there's no chance of any kicks in those, in those either. So, you know, that head movement comes in really, really handy and then transfers really well, of course, to MMA because this, the movements can be even smaller. Yeah. And Justin did shoot a single leg there. He, he did eat a one-two as he was throwing another kick. Nice knee in the clinch there from Bustin Justin. Eats oh. one back, though. Uh, he's, mo he's moving his head a lot. If Cepeda maybe throws a kick at the end of his combinations, he could probably try to catch Justin slipping into one of those strikes. And he's hanging out down there a little too long as well. We'll see if that corner picks it up and calls for it for Cepeda. Cepeda's going Terminator style on him. Just yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that's it. That's exactly what I was talking about. That's a, that's a low roll. I think when they yeah, see, Longoria is hurt. And I think he's tired, too. This has been a hellacious pace. And Cepeda's not slowing down at all. Can Javier Cepeda live up to the nickname Lights Out? He is looking for that finish right now in round two. Jeez. Another knee. 
I don't know what these guys are getting paid, but it's not enough. <laughs> yeah. This is a battle. Oh. A nice backfist there from Justin Longoria. <laughs> wow, Longoria Hunter. digging into that body a little bit. How did Bustin and Justin survive that? Yeah, because it looked like that knee landed right in the middle <laughs> of the forehead. Yeah, and, and he's a little fatigued. I mean, he's just eating that Terminator pace here from Cepeda. And hits the body to Cepeda. Oh! oh. He's on elbows. Justin's got to find his footing. <laughs> wow. Yeah, there are still two minutes left in this round. I mean, we're, ha like, we're just over halfway through the entire fight. Nice right hand there from Justin. Let's we'll over under this punch count, Alex. <laughs> I mean, 200 apiece. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but Justin's got the juice for some high kicks. I mean, body language not showing the best, but he's in it. Oh, that was a nasty little digger of a calf kick. And again, that's that, that subtle head movement there from Cepeda. Man. Is that blood coming off of Cepeda's nose? Yeah. Oh man, digs to the body with the jab. Sticks it upstairs. So there's a nice little oh. slip. Yeah, Cepeda continuing to put pressure on Longoria. And Longoria continuing to throw those big bombs every time he gets pressured. And a nice jab from Longoria, but a nice body shot there from Cepeda. Longoria's actually wearing the damage better than Cepeda is. Like, aesthetically. Oh, wow. There's a quick shot. Now, that's how you level change and shoot straight. That's the first time I've ever seen somebody go under a knee like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Usually the knee's late, but that one was way early, and Cepeda shot right underneath it. Oh, oh. Nice little double dip on that left hook from Cepeda. Justin Just rolled see. well with the punches. You might as well see everything today, right, Michael, in this fight? Yeah, that's right. You, you missed it earlier, Hill, but we had a uh, the ladies fighting <laughs> earlier that was pretty brutal. It was pretty awesome. It looked almost identical to this. Yeah, I think yeah. it was our third fight of the night. It's been a great night of fights so far. By the way, all prelims available on the Fury Fighting Championship Facebook and YouTube pages. So those of you who are watching on the UFC Fight Pass pages, we have all our fights, our prelims available as well. And thank you for joining us. Wow. All right, you guys ready to exhale for a second? Because <laughs> here are the highlights. Yeah, I think the replays are almost as exciting as we saw them the first time. But we saw Cepeda there Ooh. ending. There's that big knee right in the center of the forehead of Longoria. Longoria being very creative with his counter strikes here, landing that spinning back fist. Okay. Just when it looked like Cepeda had Longoria in trouble, Longoria comes firing back and lands a few shots of his own. Yeah, it almost seems as if Longoria maybe found a second wind about 90 seconds in the, in, in, you know, in the last bit of that second round. I'll tell you, um, Cepeda's got a big mouse under his right eye, right on his cheekbone. You see Jace Petra in there working on it. You can only do so much. Got a big mouse. I mean, it's a big one right under that right eye. It's not in a bad spot. It's not going to block the vision too much unless it starts to swell in like a more vertical fashion. By the way, so good to see Jace around here again. Oh, yeah. He always entertaining. All right, round three. Oh, true. Oh. Go ahead and uh, scratch flying knee to open the round off your bingo <laughs> card, gentlemen. <laughs> this is unreal. What a fight so far. Man. Shoo, man. Longoria with a little tighter head movement there, and you saw just a more a little craftier counter punch there because of it. I mean, these guys haven't slowed too much, which is insane. Shoo, man. Hey, nice back fist there from Justin. And just tight, tight combinations from Cepeda. I mean, oh, Ooh. man, big uppercut. Since some blood coming out of the mouth of Cepeda. Yeah, Longoria is on the hunt Shoot. now. Yeah, he sure is. Man, neither guys want to take a step back. Good head movement for Cepeda. I mean, Justin had to have found a second win. He was looking 
almost out of it there in midway through the second. But man, got some pep in his step and he's putting some real combinations together. He's continuing to left that, land that left hook, which is landing on that right cheekbone of Cepeda. And this is the kind of fight that'll make a ref or a judge resign. Dude, it's like, this yeah. is really, really difficult to call. Both guys landing well, both guys pressuring. It's also a fight, as a fight fan, you can't hate on the judges. You just go, all right, you know what? That's, ex there, there, that's there, just what you saw, right? There have like, been a few like that yeah. tonight to where, like, we genuinely didn't know who it was going to. I mean, other than some of the kind of wacky movement from Justin, he's, he's not wearing much damage. I know he did, he did get hit with that knee in that second round. I think it could be 1-1 one, one going into round number three. Cepeda, is he going to lock up that ninja choke? Looks like he wanted it. Good head placement, though, from Longoria. Longoria putting some pressure here. Maybe taking a break for 20 seconds, halfway through the third round. Longoria's a creative striker. Little slip there from Longoria. Man, nice I, jab from Spider. No matter what oh. happens, Alex. I'm so excited to see Javier. First time fighting here at Fury. Can't wait to see him fight again. Oh, this man. Is, again, and this goes back to your point, Michael. The flyweight division. You can make some noise. You can rise pretty fast and Ooh. fast track yourself to the UFC. Both of these guys looking to make some noise right now with under two minutes left. Oh, <laughs> man. And just remember at one point they were thinking about banning this weight division or getting rid of it because it wasn't <laughs> exciting. Mm. That is no longer the case. Jeez. Blood starting to come down the face of Cepeda. Longoria I mean, thinking he can land that spinning back fist. I mean, I don't know who's winning or who's landing more. These guys are both just beating the tar out of each other. Oh, big right hand there from Cepeda. Uh -oh. But a back fist met there from Longoria. They got just over a minute left. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, both, both these guys are getting bloodied up now. It's crazy. Someone's got to lose this fight. I mean, honestly, Cepeda's wearing it worse than Justin is. Oh, another attempt. Oh. A lot worse. I feel like Cepeda's landed more, but it doesn't look like it. Justin looking to secure a takedown. And they get bloody here, boys. Nice turn there from Cepeda. Let's have Joe Solis call timeout and move these guys to the other <laughs> side of the cage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big clinch knee from Cepeda. Big uppercut. Spinning oh, back oh elbow. Take, huge takedown. That was big for Justin Longoria. If he could secure. Oh, he cut him open bad with something. Oh, wow. man. Maybe that's spinning back elbow. I'll tell you, that, that one strike oh, and this back take could have been the. Could it be wow. the moment? Oh, there there we go. Now. Oh, there's enough time. It's tight. There's time here, too. Oh, yeah. He's got a gable grip there. That's going to finish. That's going to oh, finish. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Busting Justin, Justin Longoria with the tap in the potential fight oh, of the wow. year. Nominee, what a way to open up Fury Challenger Series 8. Wow, Justin Longoria. Man, what a fight. Neither guy, Raheel, has anything to be ashamed of in this fight. For those of you watching for the first time, welcome to Fury Fighting Championship. Man, this is such a back and forth. How many spinning back fists did Longoria land in this fight? It had to be a dozen. But both guys going back and forth. This is really, really close, and then this takedown. And you can see the blood starts to trickle down the face. And there it is, that rear naked choke, that gable grip, rear naked choke. And Longoria is ecstatic. What a fight. An absolute fight of the year candidate here at Fury. 
And Justin Longoria moves this record to 3-0-1. Oh, Why wait division? Get ready because both of these guys are coming. Yeah, and with less than 10 seconds left in the third round, just couldn't make it anymore. He would have went to sleep if he wouldn't have tapped. A legit wow. walk, walk off submission. Reminiscent of Jose Altuve. Yeah. Here we go. Let's make this thing official. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes. Four minutes, 52 seconds into the third and final round. Declaring your winner by tap out due to a rear naked choke. Busted, Justin Longoria. And with that submission, he picks up a performance bonus courtesy our good friends at Private Label. That was an insane fight. Man, a finish with just seconds left. You made a mess here in this Fury cage. <laughs> How did you think the fight was going to score had you not got that finish? Uh, I ain't gonna lie, I don't know. I got my hair in fight. So whatever the judges give me, but I'm always looking for the finish. I said, I'm aggressive. Man, that was one of the best live fights I have ever seen. That puts you at 3-0. and What do you want to do next? Uh, Dana, whenever you want to call me, I'm ready. I stay ready. And I ain't never got to get ready. That's how we do it. And I want to dedicate this fight to a loved one I lost. Memo, he was always at my fights. I love him to death. And thank you for my family showing up. Man, put on fights like that, everyone's gonna wanna watch you scrap. That was awesome. Your winner, Bustin' Justin Longoria. Man. Wow. What a fight, what a moment. Fighting with a heavy heart. Justin Longoria opening up the card with a huge win over Javier Cepeda. All right, let's get to our next fight and meet our next fighter. Please welcome to the blue corner, Herman Ponce. Herman Ponce, two, five, and one. First time inside the Fury FC cage. Michael, he's been fighting since 2020 and has stayed really busy. Yeah, stayed busy. And also, only one of his fights, win or lose, has gone past the first round. So he's gonna come in here, you're gonna see a lot of activity in this first round. And he's either gonna catch someone or he's gonna get caught. That's typically the way the fights go, Alex. Yeah, yeah, this was another fun one. Uh, his opponent, Jared Culpepper, super crafty, really, really big for the weight class. Yeah, this is a, another great flyweight fight. They expect the same pace as the last one we just got to watch, believe that or not. I mean, it's awesome. We have a, a, a night of flyweights and bantamweights, and then one of the most decorated 205 wrestlers we'll ever see in yeah. the cage. Fought four times in 2021 and 2022. Look for... Herman Ponce to keep this standing. Has a really good striking package. But his opponent, Diara Culpepper, ooh, he's a monster himself. Yeah, he is. Last time we saw Culpepper in the cage, you put uh, a guy to sleep with a ninja choke. I mean, this is another really fun, kind of wild matchup of styles, both like technically and physically. El Macho is inside. Let's meet his opponent. Please welcome to the red corner, Ciara Culpepper. Things are about to get spicy here because Spice Culpepper, Ciara Culpepper, 3-0 record. Second time inside the Fury FC cage. Yeah, I had commentated his last fight with you guys in Dallas. And uh, he put the guy, you know, he hit that ninja choke. And then I talked to him after the show. And he was like, you commentated one of my amateur fights and you kept calling out what I was going to do before I did it. And I took offense to that. He was just kidding. I really appreciated how he appreciated our commentary work. <laughs> and man, and I appreciate him as a martial artist. He's always putting on shows. And you guys will see, he's six foot tall at flyweight. I mean, it's not going to get much taller than that. This guy's ripped up. He's got a very diverse striking style, a really sneaky grappling style. He's always a fun one to watch. Training at Jackson Wink, Michael. So you know he's in a room full of savages as well. And he is just getting better and better. The 26-year-old. Yeah, I want to see the. He's five. He was five and two as an amateur, also on top of being three and zero. Oh. I want to see the two guys and what they're doing today that beat him as an amateur. <laughs> so one was Karan Reed, and he's doing well for himself as a yeah. pro. He just fought, I think, on Friday and won his maybe second or third yeah. pro fight. 
So yeah, he lost a good opposition as an amateur, forged him into a strong professional, and he's undefeated at 3-0, looking to go 4-0 later this evening. Yeah, and at six foot, 125, Alex, it's gonna be really difficult to find him fights. As you mentioned, the height advantage for Cole Pepper, reach advantage as well. Our tail of tape for this flyweight bout brought to you by Live O Texas Vodka. Both fighters are inside. And we will get our official introductions here shortly with Wayne Leggett. The following contest brought to you by Live Oak Texas Vodka is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury FC Flyweight Division. Introducing your first competitor, fighting out of the blue corner. This mixed martial artist stands five feet six inches tall and he weighed in at 125.4 pounds. Fighting out of Chihuahua, Mexico. Today, he looks for his third win as a pro. Here is El Macho, Herman Ponce. <laughs> and introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This freestyle fighter stands six feet tall, and he weighed in officially at 125.2 pounds. Fighting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, by way of Chicago, Illinois, he holds a perfect professional record of three wins. No losses. Here is Tiara Spice Culpepper. Your referee in charge of the action, Jeff Rexroad. Herman Ponce with the blue gloves. Diara Culpepper with the red. Oh, and things are getting spicy oh. from the start. Jump knee. <laughs> Herman was all over him. Okay. Fans don't expect this to go past the first round. There's just no Ooh. way. Jeez. <laughs> Diara Culpepper always looking for those highlight reel finishes. Man, if Herman lands though, I mean, he's throwing those big hooks over the top. Trying to clip the taller fighter. Culpepper's happy to stand and engage with him. The Mexican fighter out of Chihuahua. Representing that corazón. Culpepper's looking for those knees. He's got to be careful, like, leaning and reaching on him. Oh. Yes. Andre Arlovsky versus Fedor. <laughs> Arlovsky went for a jump knee. Fedor threw an overhand right over the top. The rest was history. Nice jab there from Culpepper. That height and slight reach advantage not bothering Herman so far, guys. No, when you when you jump in like a nuclear sub, <laughs> it won't matter. It looks like DR's starting to try to find his range. He's trying to counter punch now some of Herman's big strikes, but man, those are some good strong low kicks. Mike, I see what you mean when you say Herman either he just gets it done or it loses in the first. There's no second round for this man. Ooh. Nice high kick from Diara. Got a minute and a half into the first round, and we've seen a lot of bombs thrown by Herman Ponce. Oh, Ooh. nice check hook there from Culpepper using his range. Nice little step and knee. Didn't quite meet its mark. You see Herman is on a nice rear body lock. Instantly hand fought there from Culpepper. Culpepper looks for a Kimura. Ooh. He's got it behind the back. It's not quite bent, though. He's got to put a hard bend in that elbow. Yeah, that's a straight arm bar, and Alex, you, oh. you know that those things can end not well. This thing can go from I'm okay oh. to snapped really, really quick. Man, I think there's a cut on Herman's face as well. Maybe from the knee. I mean, that knee had just landed. We'll see. Oh. Nice pass though from oh. Herman. Nice transitions there from Herman Ponce. Dark Culpepper on the bottom now. Yeah, Herman's leaking. He got cut somewhere. So when Culpepper threw the knee, the knee didn't like crash, but it did It did touch his face. Herman jumps a back take. Just not high. quite out of it. If Herman can figure for his legs, or even look to reload those hooks on the bottom side. But now he's in a rough spot. Good Good left connecting. Yeah, landing there on the ground, looking at the ref like, through three punches and look at the ref like you're gonna stop this thing <laughs> definitely not not <laughs> jeff <laughs> jeff rex inside our referee for this bout 
Yeah, you can see Ponce already having trouble. Oh, that, oh man. That's under the, deep. under the chin. That's very, very tight. He's got full back exposure, too. Uh -oh. He's clinging onto uh -oh. the supporting arm for dear life. I mean, Ponce has to turn hard. He survived it, but... Yeah, also, that blood's going into the eyes there. He's right back in it, though. I think we're going to... Oh, man. Diara Culpepper trying to free that right arm to connect the choke, but nothing yet. Now putting all sorts of pressure. And that choking arm is in position, but, but Ponce just did not let the supporting arm go. Yeah, good There's defense. A pile of blood in this cage. The Fury cage crew. Hopefully getting paid a little overtime today because the first two fights have been bloody. Under one minute now, left arm snaking through. Copa are doing well not to, not to try to force those rear naked oh, choke finishes. Oh, no. Here we go, oh, the bulldog, bulldog choke here. Ponce can try to spin to his left hard. He can't sit here, though. He can't sit here and wait. There's 35 seconds and more than enough time to put anyone to sleep. And that is under the chin. I think we're going to see a tap. I mean, Culpepper squeezing. Man, wow. man. Come on with the crazy escape and reversal. Beautiful. And he's bro. on his back. Oh. Hit him with the Uno reverse. El Macho. What is happening? Culpepper gives a thumbs up. Man. Now that's a reversal. 10 seconds left. Leaving some parting shots is Ponce. I thought there's no way we'd see a second round. I thought there was no way. Unbelievable. Crazy. Man, let's see if the guys in the highlight room can't show us where that cut came from. I think it came from that long right knee of Culpepper. When your kneecap like touches any anywhere on the face, especially near the orbital, I mean, it'll cut that skin right open. Yeah, any of those sharp corners of your face, the cheekbone, the eyelid, any of those sharp corners you hit with a knee, even barely, it's going to be. Can't tell if it was there. There's that Kimura that he almost had. He's already bleeding. And so that might have been that knee that landed in that last exchange we just saw. Man, props to Herman Ponce. This guy is in it to win it. I mean, there was a lot of times he could have been out of there and no one would have thought twice, but he just had the will to stay in the mix. I mean, that Kimura straight arm bar, you know, snafu we got caught in, these two rear naked chokes, I mean, fully locked in under the chin. And he seems pretty fresh. This is crazy. Well, we get a second round, which is Man. nice. Yeah, for only the second time in Ponce's career. Let's see if uh, how he does here in the second round. He doesn't seem tired. I saw him get up off the stool. He seems cool. This man likes to fight. Round two, a little bit more measured to start. Meunier's got a good cut right over that left eye. It's already bleeding. Yeah, he's got to be careful to keep wiping it away. They will stop this and take a look at it if he keeps doing that. Yeah, it seems like it's right under his eyelid, mm. or his eyebrow, I mean. That was a good left hook from Jermon. Herman. Nice oh, low oh. Kick. Just a slip there yeah. after the connect. You know, sometimes those low kicks will hit a nerve, too, and just give you drop for a second. Oh, that one, he kind of kicked Culpepper in his shin. Nice right hand from Culpepper. Oh, big low kick. Herman, he's not playing around. Culpepper landed a hammer fist there on the <laughs> exit. Hit him with the backside of the fist. I love it, straight down. Oh, big step, oh, wow. step in neither from Culpepper. But he's eating these low kicks, man. If Culpepper wants to stand defeated, he's going to have to earn it tonight because Herman Ponce is you know, not one to be taken lightly. And even though he almost finished that choke in the first round, I mean, do you want to go back to the ground with Ponce? <laughs> Man. I mean, in the, when you, you know, you're looking at a guy, he's all bloody, he's beaten up, but he's just still in your face. Yeah, and the forward movement's coming from Ponce. Michael, it's so funny you say this. Like, do you want to go to the ground with him? 
most of his losses are via submission, so yeah. he's been working on it, been getting better, being more aggressive. Oh, oh man. Those, those low kicks, I mean, a couple more, and Culpec Culpepper's movement's going to be really limited. You know, being six foot at flyweight, he's pretty lean and, and pretty long. There's not a lot of quad to protect that femur and those nerves. <laughs> and see, even right there, he lost his footing. I think he's struggling to step on that left foot. And just in those, it's crazy how low kicks can compound. Like one's tolerable, and then it just gets worse. And it's like it's, like it's, it's twice as bad every mm -hmm. time you get hit in it. And then Ponce knows it. Yeah, man, just going for it again. Ponce again brushing that blood out of the eye, but not letting it bother him, not letting it affect his performance here. Mons counters. I mean, usually you get a few touches off the counters. He's loading up on the counters. <laughs> With everything. And I, that's why I can't believe his body language is as good as it is. And Herman Ponce, I mean, he doesn't seem tired. And every, everything he's thrown has been 100%. Every strike, every escape, every attack. And he's Col continuing to move forward and put the pressure on Culpepper. Culpepper's still throwing a lot of, you know, side kicks with that lead leg. It can't be too compromised if you're still able to throw it so willingly. But Culpepper, he's, he's not getting low kicked anymore. He's, like, making sure his defense is on point. And he's feeling in that lead leg. 130 left. Round two. Jeez. Get a little breather here for a second. Fight clock brought to you by OnlyFans. Forgot to mention that because it's been so exciting. <laughs> Shout out to OnlyFans. Subscribe to the Fury FC OnlyFans account. Ooh, nice left hand there from Cole Peppers. Sheesh. I know I just said this in the last fight, but I don't know what these guys are getting paid, but it's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... At this point, I'm okay with just bringing all four of these flyweights and just turning it into a round robin. <laughs> Oof, man. Honestly, I think Jermon Ponce is winning this round. I mean, he's coming forward. He's he's landing the more significant strikes with that low kick and that left hook. I mean, Culpepper's going to have to make some adjustments. Culpepper definitely wins round number one. And then props to Culpepper. I mean, he's been hit, what, 12, 14 times hard in that lead leg. And these aren't like range-finding point-scoring kicks. These are like wind-up with the baseball bat, Jose Auto-style kicks. Oh. oh. He went for a, a cartwheel kick. Yeah. And I, I, I think Jermon may have changed levels to shoot at the exact same time. Something weird. Jermon Ponce working the... Left leg of Diara Culpepper in round two. I I can't believe we're seeing a third round. <laughs> I don't think Ponce can either. <laughs> round three coming up. But first, our highlights for round two. And those leg kicks really taking a toll on Culpepper at the beginning of the second round. You see some hard, hard leg kicks, like you said, Alex. Culpepper just, as the bigger fighter, you can see he's just kind of bullying him around a little bit. And but you know the punches that he's landing are not devastating. They're 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 well placed, but they're just not doing a, a you know they're not affecting him. Even though they're causing some damage, it's not affecting Ponce that much. Ponce, one of the toughest guys we've seen Man. in the Fury Cage. And you know what's his record? Two and five. Anyone watch it at home? Like you know. It, Two and five is not the greatest record, but this guy's a beast. I yeah, mean, still don't mess with him in the street for you at home. <laughs> no, no. And then and even like looking to fight him, you know, win or loss, this guy is a handful for anybody. No glove touch. Mutual respect here for round three. And quickly, records be damned. If you come into Fury on a four-fight contract, you go four and oh. You are making noise and catching some eyes. 
Huge left hook there from Herman. Yeah, Herman is much improved from his last fights. And, you know, like you said, Alex, at two and five, you know, this guy is still a threat, even to Derek Goldpepper, who, you know, we think is winning this fight. But, um, you know, he, he's still a threat in there. He's still throwing hard, still landing those leg kicks, still moving forward. It's funny, his leg kicks have become such a weapon in this fight. He's taking away Culpepper's reach and height advantage because Culpepper has to stay out of kick range, which is out of his own boxing range. Mm. It's interesting. Yeah, and he's shortening his base so there's not as much power in his punches. You stand with that long base, it's really hard to pull those legs up to check those kicks. And if you guys see, Culpepper's like moving backwards and he's missing his punches. He wants to be out of that low kicking range. I don't blame him. I would want to be out of that low kicking range. Man. I'll tell you though, Culpepper is wearing these low kicks like a champ. Not even really limping around, still coming forward. A little slip. Culpepper looking for that highlight reel again. A couple of people have slipped over there in that corner on I that mean, bump box sign. Ooh, oh. I mean, there's been so much blood, and this is the second <laughs> war in a row. Oh, he's got a guillotine. Oh, nope, his head pops right out. Speaking of bump box, Trey the Truth was here earlier tonight. New album out right now. Support H Town's own Trey the Truth. Looks so like he's back in on that Kimura, maybe? No. Yeah, if you don't follow Trade the Truth on Instagram, you need to do that. Not only is he a you know, great entrepreneur, great musician, but, man, that dude does a ton for this community here in Houston. I think I'm going to check on the cut, I think. You know, uh, you know I, I, and I don't know. I'm, I'm not in there, but it doesn't, it doesn't look like it's gotten much worse. I mean, it was bad out the gates. Look oh no, it, it got worse. You can yeah. see it's way <laughs> more open. Ay, it, ay, ay. Like, yeah, it is their skin hanging off now. Oh yeah. man. I, I mean it was there's... it was Ooh. there from the get. Ooh. Oh. Doc's cool. They're gonna let him okay. go. That looked nasty. Man, that is as wide as this pin. Herman that... Ponce is a new friend of ours. First time seeing him fight, man, he's already made a fan. This guy's tough as nails. Look at it. He is just absorbing every punch he's taking and just is almost like fueling him right now. And not only that, Ponce has this fierce look on his face still. Like he's in the hunt to just murder this person. <laughs> We've always seen it. Mexican boxers just have that nonstop mentality. We're, we've seen it in MMA as well, and the fighter from Chihuahua, El Macho, displaying it right now. Round three, 130 left. They'll, they'll never quit. you got to kill them, and they're hard to kill. <laughs> Man, win, lose, or draw... Uh, Herman Ponce, El Macho came in prepared for this fight he did. against a very, very good opponent, undefeated opponent. I mean, this is uh, this has been very, very entertaining. But I mean, this has been anybody's fight the whole way through because this not just because of the points, but just because of this thing could end at any wow. moment. Still have a minute left. How is Culpepper's leg not just a chewed up mess right now? Less than a minute. Pond's still coming forward. Still ripping those low kicks. We're going to touch base with Cole Pepper tomorrow. I bet you he is not oh, looking man. to spry tomorrow. Especially if you got to get on an airplane. He's all yeah. tall and long, <laughs> yeah. sitting in those small oh. seats. Oh. oh. 15 seconds here.
There's that other, another attempt at it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if taking bottom position like that was a smart. Oh. oh. <laughs> he didn't want to let it go. Yeah. <laughs> but I got the triangle. Yeah. I mean, cool. That was, man, a, a, that was a bizarre fight, to wow. say the least. What an entertaining fight. How do you guys score that fight? I mean, round one is Culpepper. Culpepper. Round two, I thought it was clearly Herman Ponce. The leg, the, the kicks were yeah, unstoppable. This round, I'm not sure. Man, I just think with the damage, I mean, Herman Ponce landed a ton of leg kicks in that round, which probably damage-wise should have won him the fight, but it just doesn't show on Culpepper's Cole Cole face. Yeah, and that, show cut, his face, that blood doesn't show help. His legs, it doesn't show any of that. And then this, you know, this last scramble, I mean, it was kind of more of a uh, vanity scramble. They're <laughs> trying to put on a little show here at the end. He locks that triangle up, too. Yeah. There's no time left, though. Oh, that cut, man. Jeez. While the judges calculate everything and we find out who wins this fight, we want to take a moment to set the table for the rest of this evening. We still have five more, or excuse me, six more fights left. Anthony Kassar coming up in a couple of fights. For those of you who are tuning in to watch the national champion compete. And if you're enjoying these free fights on a Sunday, make sure you subscribe to UFC Fight Pass. We have cards throughout the year on UFC Fight Pass as well as the UFC Fight Pass Facebook and YouTube pages. And Submission Hunter Pro. And you get access to the entire UFC library, okay? You can't beat that searchable by name. It is such a great asset to have. All right, let's see how the judges score this fight. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of combat, we go to the judges' scorecards for your decision. Brought to you by Howler Head Whiskey. Judge Danielle Guevara scores the fight 30 to 27. Culpepper. Judge Chance Williams scores the fight 29-28, Ponce. And Judge Gino Garcia scores the fight 29-28, declaring your winner by split decision, Herman Ponce. Wow. Herman Ponce. With a huge win, you see D.R. Culpepper falling to his knees in disgust. Crazy. I mean, two and three, two judges gave Ponce rounds two and three from the left hook low kick. Yeah, not a, I mean, it's really hard to agree or disagree. I mean, it's, it's the 30-27 I thought might have been odd, but still, I mean, it's a, uh, Man, it's a uh, the judging criteria is uh, is true to form, Alex. And what we talked about earlier, it's it's uh, all about damage. All right, let's meet our next fighter. Please welcome Ricardo Canales to the blue corner. Ricardo Canales, 0-2 record, second time inside the Fury FC cage. Coming off that loss to Jacob Berry, Michael. Yeah, fighting out of Midland, Texas. Uh, you know, 0-2 as, uh, as a pro, but 3-0 as an amateur. So, you know, he has had some success. We've said it before. You can go 5-0. We have a fighter who is 14 or 15-0 as an amateur and then has yet to win a fight yeah. at, at, as a pro Crazy. in six fights. So you never know. An amateur is no indication about how you're going to be as a pro. Also, Ricardo Canales is taking some pretty tough fights. And another Jackson Wink MMA fighter, Ricardo Canales. That Jacob Berry fight at Fury FC 78 in April got finished in round one and immediately just got caught with a hook and Barry just took care of him and Canales was almost arguing like I'm not let, let me keep fighting here but enough was enough so let's see what he can show in this fight yeah he doesn't have an, any easy fights as he fights Ali Jimenez one of the more decorated kickboxers here in Houston The one thing I do love about Ricardo Canales going back watching his fights, he does look for finishes. 
and that leaves him open sometimes. All right, he is inside. Let's meet our Please next fighter. Welcome Oliver Jimenez to the red corner. And you mentioned one of the most decorated Muay Thai fighters and one of the great all-time guys here in the Houston MMA scene, Ali Oliver Jimenez. Two and two record coming off that big win over Zay Garcia in round one. Yeah, he's pretty tall for the weight class. Um, he doesn't really load up on his shots at all. He'll use his boxing to set up his kicks. His kicks come very fast. And uh, even though he doesn't load up on him, his kicks are powerful, man. I've seen him hit some low kicks on some guys, maybe five or six build up, and then they can't walk. Got a really crafty uh, game in the clinch. Um, two and two record, you know, as a pro, he has had some adversity in the cage, but, you know, who hasn't? He's fought tough competition. And, uh, and he has found, you know, his winning ways with his two wins, which both came by knockout. It's actually all, all four of his fights have all been finishes. So, I mean, he's definitely a game fighter. Yeah, in that first fight, that Christian Strong fight, you know, Oliver was kind of watching and admire his own kicks and then got caught with a punch after Christian Lopez, was yeah. caught. Or yeah. Christian Lopez, but yeah, he was able to, to get the knockout there, but Oliver Mena has never done it since. Our tail of tape brought to you by OnlyFans. The reach advantage, height advantage goes to Ali Oliver Jimenez, the 29-year-old in action once again, trying to move that record up to three and two. Let's get our official introductions. The following contest brought to you by OnlyFans is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury FC Phantom Way Division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. This mixed martial artist stands five feet seven inches tall and he weighed in at 134.2 pounds. Fighting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Today, he looks for his second win as a pro. Here is the Jaguar, Ricardo Canales. And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This freestyle fighter stands five feet 11 inches tall and he weighed in officially at 136.2 pounds. Fighting out of Houston, Texas, his professional record stands at two wins, two losses. Here is Oliver Jimenez. Your referee in charge, Patrick Petlon. All right, Patrick Petlon with the assignment here for this bantamweight showdown. Canales with the blue gloves, Jimenez with the red. Alex, just say now, I'd be shocked if this fight at least the first round because both of these guys <laughs> are aggressive. Yeah, Ali will slowly chip away at you too. Not even slow, he'll quickly do it. His punches are quick, his kicks are quick. It's what I mean, like no load up, but that was a snap kick. I mean, that was a... A cracker of a kick. Probably hitting some switch stance action. There's been so much anticipation in Oliver's career. Talking to him. You know, he he's taking it one step at a time. He's like, look, I get it. Like, this is my fifth fight as a professional. I'm not panicking yet. Don't worry about the record. Yeah, he stayed very active, too, since his pro debut. Canales stays pretty low, throws hard. Two good low kicks there from Molly. It's been a while, but I sparred with Ollie back in the day, and man, he would just constantly pressure forward. Really tricky to, to, to get a beat going when they're just kind of marching your way, marching mm. your way. He'd be a little more apprehensive here with his four ounce gloves, but you can see he's kind of keeping that high guard, fainting, coming forward. How are the angles on his striking? Man, good. Like, he, he uses his punches to set up his kicks really well. Mm. And granted, he was doing exclusively Muay Thai back when we would train. So, again, very kick-heavy game. I know in MMA you got to box a bit more. Well, 
has also been working on his ground game, getting better and better with Eves Edwards. You know, he's just kind of chipping away, chipping away at the legs, even at the forearms, blocking those round kicks. Those will do damage. Yeah, Ali eventually is going to take out the base of Canales. Those, you know, you can't take those leg kicks like that for very long, especially from a seasoned guy who knows how to throw those kicks and you know knows where to where to make them land and can pretty much make them land wherever he wants. Oh, now going to the calf is Ali. One thing Canales does well is he sits really low. So if he does really explode in, he's going to have a good amount of weight behind his punches. But notice Ali rarely goes back in straight lines, he's cutting that lead side angle. Under two minutes left in round one. Nice guys exchange jabs. And again. Over a minute, it looked like he was speed bagging. Oh, oh, big right hand there. That's what I mean. He was sitting low. There was a lot of weight in that right hand. I don't know what he. I don't know what all he was throwing. Maybe a, maybe a knee or a kick, but that was just fate. Canales came over the top of the big right, able to get that knockdown. I mean, we've talked about the transition to MMA for Oliver Jimenez, but let's talk about the defense on the striking. How different is that, right? The gloves are smaller, so you're used to a certain style in kickboxing. I mean, we even saw a fight on the main card in pay-per-view last night, or yesterday, you know, midday, where a guy got rocked with a jab, you know? Ikram rocked it, Alves with a jab, and then a flying knee. I mean, just four-ounce gloves, it doesn't take much at all to cut someone, to drop them. And those openings are there, so much easier to exploit. Now Canale is working with 45 seconds left. Yeah, Ali's hand is stuck behind his own back. You can see Canales, his left arm has Ali's arm trapped. He's trying to hand it off. It's like an old man move in jiu-jitsu. Yeah. <laughs> he used to upset me so bad. That's extremely frustrating when someone's got your hand, downward pressure on the wrist, right above the glove. It's really difficult to get your hand free from there. Seconds left. Well, a lot of pressure from Canales. All right, good close nice. of the round by Canales. Yeah, for sure. Drop something. You gotta, you gotta give him that round. I'd say it's a pretty classic 10-9. You know, because he was losing. I'd say prior to that drop, but he found his mark. I mean, that's all. I think that's all he needed to know he can do. Is land that shot. How much confidence does that give you, Alex, whenever you, you know, maybe lose in the fight, but also you know that one punch can drop this guy? I mean, all the confidence in the world. You know, if you're in there and you don't drop and you don't have that confidence, like you, you got an issue. But if you know you can put him down, you can land that shot, you know, I'd take that all day long. Oh, yeah, it was a, it was a right, I don't know if it was a right kick or a right knee that Ollie was throwing, but it was just fate. Ollie goes to one foot and then... Watch, 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 coming up in just a second. Bang. Oh. There's a right low kick. Just right as, right as Canales changed levels for the right hand. I wouldn't even say he timed the low kick as a counter. It was just fate. Like, I talk about that all the time in MMA. There's like, I don't, I don't like calling it luck because it's not. It's yeah. fate. You know, Canales chose to throw that right hand at the perfect time. All right, round two. We'll see what adjustments Oliver Jimenez makes. Can Ricardo capitalize on his counter punching again? So even that one was better. He threw that jab right before that low kick. So that jab deters Canales from, say, sitting down on the right hand. See if Canales goes back to the back to the same thing. You'll see him squat down and kind of get yeah, that was it in a really tight and compact position, and then try to come over the top with that right hand. Oh, oh that's hooked oh, there from Ollie. Oh. Looking to click for the knees and the elbows. This is where Oliver is even more dangerous when those knees and elbows start firing off up against the cage. 
You guys were just asking about the confidence when dropping a guy. I mean, it didn't take much. That was a, a little. Oh, oh, that right hand rocked Ollie. He's got to be careful. <laughs> Man. But it was just it was like a small left hook from Ollie that dropped Canales. Canales hits him with a short little right hook. Rocks him back. I mean. Yeah, and two very different knockdowns, too. You know, Canales got the knockdown early because basically because Jimenez was on one leg. And so, you know, you leaning back, you get punched in the face. It's really difficult just to stay on your feet. But it may not necessarily have that flash knockout power that you think that you're thinking of, as opposed to what Ollie did just now. Both feet firmly planted on the ground. <laughs> and you hit that chin, and he just fold down in, right put in, in front of you. Put him in quicksand. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, those are completely different knockdowns. And you know, even though it's a legit knockdown for Canales, uh, you know, Ollie Jimenez is on one leg, and there's no worse for the wear here. Coming in aggressive here. Oliver taking his time here. Not getting too excited over the knockdown. It was a nice little five piece. It was like a jab low kick and then like a one, two, three. Just really firm and planted. There's that squat down and that getting compact again. He knows what's coming. Nice. It's another good glow kick there. That one, Canales felt. Look at he's already lifted his leg up, fainted that leg up. Man, Ricardo has eaten some big kicks, but he's still comfortable in that range trying to find that opening yeah just a punch away and oh nice oh. jump knee to a right hand to a left kick yeah it's those kind of combinations that make oliver jimenez just a beautiful fighter to watch i mean you know, not many guys can, you know, throw a one-two combined with a you know, flying knee straight into a head kick. I mean, it's just a, it's a beautiful display of striking. Even when it misses, it's really fun to watch. Carlos is doing a good job hiding that leg, but I, mean, I can tell you every time he gets hit with that calf kick, he kind of stands still, making sure he's got some feeling in that leg. And Ollie's done a good job going above the knee and below the knee. Tagging that big muscle group on the calf and then naturally the quad. Ooh. A little step in left knee there from Ollie. Oh, nice front kick there. A little foot jab action. Right in the middle of an overhand right. Knocks Canales off balance. Oh, nice step and elbow. There goes the mouth guard of Canales. And a fight like this, you almost want to be like, you know what? I know you want to wait for a better <laughs> opportunity, but let's get it back get in. The yeah, in. Yeah, let's get it in. <laughs> Ten seconds left. A oh, nice right hand. Oh, big body kick there from Oliver Menez. A good aggressive end there by Canales, but Oliver Jimenez being more technical in this round. Yeah, it's a competitive fight for sure. Um, I think Oliver takes that second round. Yeah, for sure. You know, he, he dropped in with that hard left hand. And like I said, it's a way different drop than we saw Canales drop uh, yeah. Jimenez with. And so that was an actual drop and, you know, Jimenez over and over, obviously causing damage to that front leg of, of Canales. And you see that left hand. Nice little very, one, two, very three. different. Mm -hmm. Now we'll see if, if we get back up on the cage here. Watch the, I want to see the right hand of Canales. Actually rocks Ali back. As the front kick got him off balance. Yeah, Mike, you called it well. I mean, that was just a classic jab cross hook. And that hook got him right on the chin. Both feet planted. Sat him down right on his butt. A lot of weight behind that punch. 
and then like a lot of weight absorbed in that punch. All right, round three. Third fight of the night here at Fury Challenger Series 8. It's been an entertaining card so far. Yeah, absolutely. Eve Edwards over there coaching Oliver Jimenez to be Oliver Jimenez. Oh, big left knee from Ollie. Michael Chase Corley also in his corner. Muay Thai pioneer here in Houston. Michael, that's such a good point. Sometimes you got to just remind these guys, like, you're Ollie. Yeah. <laughs> like, be you. Yeah. Yeah, let's slip and rip. I'll tell you, Canales doing a good job just staying low. I mean, staying low and coming in over the top. He's, like, exploiting, you know, Ollie's height, and he'll lean back every once in a while. Another step in left knee. Canales is landing a little here, Alex. He's going right over the Ooh. guard of Oliver Jimenez. And, you know, Jimenez is keeping his hands high, but Canales able to get that right hand right over the top of the defense of Oliver Jimenez. Nice, good knees. Those are accurate knees from Jimenez. Yeah, yeah, he was. You can see as the, the, the pace wears on. Oh, he's not as sharp defensively, so some of these shots are getting over the top. And you see as he throws those kicks, that left hand goes down just a little bit. You see how every time he throws that kick, that left hand goes straight down to his hip. His little eye poke. I mean, he was reaching pretty hard on that one. Nice little eye poke. I mean, those are so weird to deal with. And it's like a compound mistake. You know, the person doing the foul, you know, gets a break. And the person oh. who gets fouled now has compromised vision from an illegal move. Like, it sucks. I mean. Yeah, and when it happens, you're never sure your vision is going to come back. You're like, yeah. this, I'm, it's not going to come back. And then slowly it does. But, man, it's really, really scary when you take something like that. And then knowing that I've still got four minutes worth of fight left. Yeah. And, you know, if, is my vision going to yeah. stay like this? Am I going to be able to continue? Because, of course, you're not going to quit. But. That's uh, very tough. Finger pokes are, eye pokes are really, really difficult to deal with. About 3.20 left in the round. Ooh, ooh, ooh right hand. Sure. Right there. We see the clock come up. Canales ate that right hand really well. I mean, that was a flush right hook from Ollie. Right, right, hard. Right, right, right. Nice jump knee there from Jimenez. Canales returns to the right hand. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That one got it. That was the one. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. <laughs> it was a small little kick, too. I bet you Kanaj just wasn't really flexed for it. Ooh. Oh, man. Yeah, not just that. It's causing him to fight out of his stance. He's gone to a southpaw, and you can tell southpaw is not his, not his stance. Yep. And Ooh. Oliver knows that he immediately, as soon as that left leg touched. Two and a half oh, minutes. Might as well be two and a half hours here for Canales. I mean, if any one kick can, can do it. Nice jab there from Ollie. Let's see if that feeling comes Ooh. back. Oh, no. Now, oh, you can see that calf Ooh. muscle swollen. Oh, this gonna is going to be near oh, the end here for Canales. See a finish here. Oh, oh man. man. He's got to just stay, stay southpaw, Canales. Look at that lump on that. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. And you guys think low kicks hurt the next day? Those calf kicks are even worse. Ooh. And I only know from checking kicks. I've never really been calf kicked. Oh, man, you can just see it swelling on us as we speak. Oh. <laughs> props to Canales staying in the mix. Oh. Yeah, a minute and a half left here. Canales Ooh. can barely stand on that leg. Man, if I was Oliver Jimenez, I would just back yeah. up and just yeah. start kicking that leg again do everything I could to get out of this and unload. Yeah, and there he goes. It's, yeah, but you can also hanging on to those overhooks for dear life. Oh, that was even kind of checked, but I think the damage is just done. And we've got a minute left in this round. That leg is gone. This cage is the other leg for <laughs> Canales right now. 
go. Oh man, he got to get that that lead leg in the on the rear side. He's gonna get it kicked and, again. And props to Canales. He's still fighting, still moving forward, trying to get some kind of connect oh, here. Oh, oh, oh. just man. <laughs> stay southpaw. Oh man, 40 seconds. This is brutal. Props to oh. Canales, man. This guy's as tough as they get. Man, I just want Jimenez to separate. I feel like he could finish this fight. I'd really like to see him get a finish here, especially with those leg kicks, man. It would be a, a unique one. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't happen very often. Yeah, Canales trying everything to hold on right now. I think, we're, I think he's going to make it out of this one. That's crazy. Ten seconds left. Oh, man, Chu, what wow. a fight. What heart from not Ooh. only these guys, but every fighter so far. I mean, from our first fight, our amateurs, wow. our, our first female fight, those girls went to war. Man. Crazy. Yeah, this uh, this was a great fight also. Both fighters finding each other, finding the chin of the other and, and putting them on their back. And then also I think the difference in the fight is, of course, going to be those leg kicks. Once Oliver Jimenez started to land those with consistency, you know, every leg kick sent Canales to the ground. I thought it was going to be over here. And, but, man, Canales very, very tough. And, again, you can see just nothing on that leg. Not able to hold any of his weight up at all. Did a good job of using the cage here to kind of stay off of it, but you could tell as soon as the bell rang, the final bell rang, he was out. Man, crazy dude. His his shin and legs gonna be so beat up tomorrow. That's crazy. Man, that short flight to New Mexico back. It's not that long, but it's gonna feel like an overseas flight. Canales, if you hear this, go go to Academy and buy a compression sleeve and put that yeah. bad boy on when you take the plane flight so it doesn't swell up too bad. Man. Hey, fight fans, don't forget to check out the Fury Unleashed podcast every week. Richard Birdmaster, Eric Garcia, Wayne Leggett, and the superstar Diego Reyes have the biggest names in MMA and in Fury on talking about everything you love, fight-related and more. We actually had the 125 champ, Paris Moran, on earlier this month as well. A lot of entertaining guests, a lot of inappropriate comments <laughs> from the crew because the Howler head is flowing. All right, let's see how the judges scored this fight. Let's go inside to Wayne. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of combat, we go to the judges scorecards for your decision. Brought to you by Trey the Truth's new album, Stuck in Motion, available on all streaming platforms. All three judges score the fight 29 28, declaring your winner by unanimous decision, Oliver Jimenez. Congratulations to Oliver Jimenez. Takes that record to three and two. We fight win streak now for Ollie. In a fun and entertaining fight, let's meet our next fighter. Please welcome to the blue corner, John Jonatazio. All right. This man is here ready to make some noise. John Jonatazio. The Italian Stallion <laughs> is stepping up and is ready to pull off a huge upset against Anthony Kassar. Well, let's talk about John first. Has been training for a long time, a long time MMA background. Since he was 18, has been training BJJ and kickboxing got a late start in MMA, Michael. You see that 0-1 record. But he is a lifelong martial artist. Yeah, and the 0-1 the record is a little deceiving. He got cut in his first fight and was not able to finish the fight because of that cut. And if you watch the fight, he may have he, I, he may have been, been, been winning that fight, but he was cut, was not able to come out of the second round. So that's the reason for that loss. But make no mistake about it, he's here to win this fight. All right, he is inside, so let's meet his opponent. Please welcome to the red corner, 
Anthony Kassar. Anthony Kassar has been looking all over for a fight. The national champion, Nittany Lion, has found himself for here at Fury FC, and he is ready to make some noise, Michael. Yeah, won his first fight uh, by arm triangle in a little over three minutes. Uh, and if you don't know the stats of this guy, I mean, you've been under a rock. Of course, <laughs> yeah. you see, uh, you'll see Bo Nickel coming out in his corner. It's his best friend and, uh, you know, former training, former and current training partner. But this guy wrestled at Penn State, 2019 Big Ten and national champion, New Jersey State champion his senior year of high school, and had never won a match before his senior year of high school. So, wow. you know, been just a, the top of the tier. If you want to watch a wrestling match that's at the highest level, Look at Anthony Kassar versus Gable Stevenson. It is an unbelievable match that Anthony Kassar won that many people thought he didn't have a chance at. It was that upset against number one Colin Moore that put him on the map and had everyone asking, who is Anthony Kassar? Who is this kid that pulled off this monumental upset? And then, as you mentioned, did defeat the gold medalist. Gable Stevenson, who is now a WWE superstar, trying to launch his career there. Beat him twice, Michael. Yeah, and you know, that alone, if he only did that and was defeated in every other match, it would be a it would be a big deal. But this dude is the top of the heap, uh, not only in wrestling, but you know, I think he's gonna have something to say to that 205 pound weight class, at, uh, Alex, at every level. Yeah, I know this is a suit, I mean, the much most anticipated Fury debut we've ever had. I'm excited to see him get to work here in just a few minutes. Our Tale of the Tape brought to you by Space City Collective. You see the height advantage, reach advantage for Anthony Kassar. The 27-year-old is looking for a fight and has finally found one. Let's get our official introductions. The following feature bout brought to you by Space City Collective is scheduled for three rounds of the Fury FC Light heavyweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. This freestyle fighter stands six feet tall and he weighed in officially at 203.2 pounds. Fighting out of Cape Coral, Florida, by way of Chicago, Illinois. Today, he looks for his first win as a pro. Here is the Italian Stallion, John. Jonatasio! And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This NCAA D1 wrestling champion stands six feet, two inches tall, and he weighed in at 202.6 pounds. Fighting out of State College, Pennsylvania, by way of Rocky Hill, New Jersey, he holds a professional record of one win, no losses, Presenting UFC Fight Pass's top fighter to watch in 2023, here is Ant, the champ, Kassar! Your referee in charge of the action, Professor Joe Solis. Not only an MMA fight on the line, but Ant is getting married. He told his fiance that I promise I'm not going to come back with damage the marriage coming up, the wedding, excuse me, in three weeks. So a lot on the line here for Kassar. And probably the most interesting thing about Anthony Kassar is he's a Swifty. Yeah. Taylor Swift. <laughs> Taylor Swift in the news a lot. Not sure if she's in the crowd today. We've seen her in every NFL crowd just about. But Yeah, puts on Taylor Swift during training sessions. Didn't have that on the bingo card. <laughs> I know Five both fans. I know both guys are very different, but both did look really sharp with his striking in his last fight. Rocked his guy with a straight left. Kassar shoots. Mm. Says I'll work on my striking later. Yeah. <laughs> let me get to, let me get let me get going what I'm great at. Yeah, I made a promise to my my fiance. <laughs> we don't need any striking in here. Maybe see if we can't see a we got a strong front headlock. John does work his way up to his feet, but he's got a I mean he's got so much pressure just on that head and arm. And for those who've never trained with collegiate athletes, especially one as decorated as Kassar, it's otherworldly. I mean, you almost can't explain it. You gotta feel it. Yeah. And these guys are brutally strong. John did a good job getting back up to his feet, but gets oh. hit with an insta quick mat return. 
Sars two for two on takedowns. Try to hit that head and arm choke again. John works his way to half guard. He's got a mighty cross face to deal with. I mean, the shoulder pressure alone there, no fun to have to absorb. Yeah, and like you said, Alex, at, you know, the top level at anything, uh, but, you know, I, I agree with Joe Rogan, says it all the time, the hardest training you can do is a is wrestling by a mile. And yep. if you've ever trained with these guys in their environment, not in yours, it's uh, it's pretty crazy how, how intense the training is for top-level wrestlers. Yeah, I was talking to a guy who made it to state at the high school level and then went and wrestled in college. And I was like, what's the difference between, like, state high school wrestlers and collegiate wrestlers? He's like, if state high school wrestlers are blue belts, then college wrestlers are black belts. Wow. Like, that is the jump. And, man, I mean, I can only imagine... Anthony bringing all of that here to Fury. Second MMA fight. Fight fans, thank you for joining us here on Fury Challenger Series 8. I'm Raheel Ramzan Lee with Michael Alexander, Alex Morono. John works his way back to full guard. I just, I just don't think we'll see a get up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really don't. I mean, no offense, no offense to John. I, I, I think if Kassar took me, then I wouldn't be able to get up. You know, I'm a 40 fight vet. It's just this level of wrestling and just the athleticism of Kassar. You know, John's done well, though. I mean, he's not been able to defend the takedowns. You know, no knock there. But he has mitigated submissions and ground strikes. He's worked his way back to full guard. And he's, he's framing and hip escaping Ooh. away. A little elbow from the bottom there from John. Oh, here we go, John. Getting some offense going. He was on with TJ DeSantis on the Extra Rounds podcast and said that he wants Anthony to experience the chaos. He said, I don't know if this guy's comfortable in the chaos of a fight. We'll see if he has a chance to unleash a little bit more damage. Going to be a little bit harder here. Little, little nose, a little bleeding out of the nose here from John. Absorbed small hammer fist or punch from the guard, probably one of these strikes, just busted his nose up. Oh, big punches there. Good activity here from Kassar on top. Oh, ends up slipping off. John works his way up oh. to his feet. Kassar was quick to reshoot, scoops the base out. John uses a whizzer. Digs an underhook. We'll see if it'll be enough. Pulls the base out yet again. Yeah, he's going to jump over the side. He's trying to go for that head and arm choke again, it looks like. But keeps getting to the mount position here. And that's not a good position to have a giant light heavyweight on top of you. Look at one with the wrestling pedigree of Anthony Kassar. He keeps looking for the head and arm choke. Oh, he's got it. He's got it there. It's a deep. Get that the angle. He's only, oh, nope. Looks like John pops his left arm down to the ground. Clears the elbow. <laughs> Ten seconds left. All right, round two. Here we come. The Italian Stallion survives round one. Big moments for Kassar, the champ. Let's see what adjustments are made. We get a look at our round one highlights here. Yeah, about what we expected. We wanted to, we thought we'd see Anthony Kassar stand with him for just a, you know, a few seconds and then take this fight to the ground. But, you know, John doing a great job of defending everything that Kassar had on the ground. You got to wonder if that feels disheartening to Kassar. I would assume not, but... And just for nothing to be able to work, uh, you know, so far, I mean, the, the takedowns worked, the control time worked. He landed a few punches, but to not be able to get that head and arm choke after going at it several times, and, you know, it's a, maybe his opponent's a little tougher than he anticipated. Yeah, you know, John's done, I think, better than a lot of people assumed and yep. anticipated he would. And props to that man. He called it, Mike. He said he's in this fight to win it. He was really honest with TJ saying, I know fans aren't here to watch me, <laughs> and I want to make some noise. 
hey man, it's the way to do it. Right. High risk, high reward. See if John can open up. That's striking a little bit. See what Kassar has. Oh, oh that's a stiff big, right. Big right hand from Kassar. Oh, man. Wow. John shucks him off. Oh, he can't be loading up. Oh, wow, and he reverses him. John going deep half. John's tired. I mean, I'm sorry. Kassar. Kassar's feeling the pace of this fight. Now, one thing, you know, Kassar, with his, you know, wrestling experience, he's been tired in matches before. He's had to work through this in the past, but... Got his hand oh, trapped yeah. behind his back. Oh. He let it go though to get the body lock instead. Yeah, it didn't look like having that hand behind his back was giving him a good punching position. So he chose to get this body lock here instead. Just see that frustration on John's face. He's almost like, Ugh. yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, had. But, I mean, yeah. I never thought I'd, in a million years we'd see him in full mount. Kassar did do a good job, kind of going to like deep half guard and coming up the back door. Kassar's coaches are calling for that wrist ride to be the right hand of Kassar, pinning John's bottom right arm. He's looking for it. I think John's pretty hip too. John's going for a Kimura here on bottom. From bottom open guard, it's going to be tough. Yeah, especially with that left elbow above the elevation of his shoulder. Makes it a little bit too weak, and Kassar is, I'm sure, well aware of that. Some blood there on the left eye. John trying to grab that again. This is a little bit better position. Just kassar has got his hand a little deeper now. And if John, <laughs> he can get this behind his back. He can at least try to sweep him with it. He doesn't really have it connected. The 37-year-old Giantasio looking for something against the champ. Under the halfway mark of round two. Oh, they're gonna stand him up. Yeah, it looks like they're breaking him to stand him up. Wow. Not a lot of not a lot of action happening. And Joe Solis oh, hasn't oh, seen enough. Oh, oh. <laughs> now, now one thing we know Kassar can do is you yeah. know like wrestle tired and lay on top. Interesting. I mean, I, this I don't think anyone ex really knew exactly what was going to happen. That's not what I expected was going to happen. Yeah, and John's going to take him however he can get him. He had to sneak up <laughs> yeah. on him that time. He was going to do it <laughs> perfectly within the rules, but Joe Solis said to fight. Fans are not happy with the performance of Kassar. A little yelling coming in from uh, the fans here. I don't think the mics picked it up, but I heard it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, when, when expectations are so high yeah. out the gates, it's bound to happen. I think we're all, we're all pretty seasoned. We've been fighting a long time. Yeah. I, I mean, at least I know this is not the easiest thing to do in the world. And for Kassar, it's only his second fight. You know, and second fight with the expectations, how much does that play into where you haven't been able to finish this guy just yet? And, like, let this be a lesson on how good Bo really did do. You yeah. know, he was able to get some brutal finishes, knockouts, submissions over good guys. So it's just not so easy. Triangle attempt here from John. Can John get that right leg over the shoulder? That's the question. And he cannot. As he absorbs a couple strikes. And I just, I don't even know if I'd want a triangle Anthony Kassar. <laughs> I mean, you, you imagine being powerbombed by this guy. I mean, you guys can't really tell at home because these are both big, big men. But Anthony Kassar is a big man. 
near the end of round two. Punches raining down, a couple connect there. But we go to round three, end of the fight. That was Joke. it, Joke, that was it. Fight. <laughs> We'll have to get a louder buzzer here. Yeah, yeah. it's funny. They used a different buzzer. I mean, yeah. it sounded like my gym, blow, my, my gym coach blowing his whistle back yeah. in eighth grade. And it sounded like it came from the upper deck. <laughs> it didn't yeah. sound very loud at all. Yeah, Professor Cho Solis was uh, confused as well because he didn't hear it. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, fight fans, welcome in. We're here with Zonley, Michael Alexander, Alex Morano, UFC veteran. We are so excited for everyone to join us here on this Sunday. We look at our round two highlights. Yeah, I mean, John did a good job here of almost landing on top. <laughs> and, you know, it, it's really difficult to say, and, you know, we're not knocking him, but, man, Anthony Gassar is just such a high-level wrestler. To do this many good things against him in a round is just completely unexpected. And, you know, and then it's hard to even say that they're good because Anthony Gassar is obviously winning this fight. And, you yeah. know, the control time, the takedowns, the damage done, I mean, it, it's he's winning in every facet of this fight, but maybe just not the way that we expected him to. But like you said, Alex, I would challenge anyone to come in here who thinks this is easy or that he should be just running right through a lifelong martial artist just because he has one loss is out of their mind. I mean, both this guy is very powerful and both very skilled. <laughs> Round three. Oh, all right, looks like they got their horn working again. <laughs> Real, I can hear some of the crowd yeah, talking as well. Just stay on your feet, bro. Got some good <laughs> coaching coming here from the awesome Houston Ooh. crowd. Big right hand there from Kassar as he enters into that double leg. Quick guard pass. And this is where we want to see, right, what does Kassar have? We know we can, he can get to this point. That's easy for him against most opponents. But what can he do from here? A reversal from John. He's got to get under hooks. He's got to turn. I mean, if Kassar can do anything, it's reshoot. And reshoot he did. John stays upright. Even if the chin was in. I don't know if John's got the juice to guillotine Kassar at this point. I mean, he's done a good job mitigating damage, but, I mean, he has been riding out Kassar for 10-plus minutes. Mm. And that's an athlete who knows how to hang his weight on you. One of the coolest things I saw at weigh-ins yesterday, Kassar, I mean, he's a big name, right? I think we all pretty much know him here at Fury now. But he went around and introduced himself to everybody that wanted to talk to him. That was really cool to see that this young man has no ego in this. Yeah, man, it takes such discipline to be successful, you know, in a sport at, at such a high level in his wrestling. It, it generally builds good character. They know what hard work is about. Their work ethic is usually very strong. And with that comes respect. Yeah, and I was talking to him up in the locker room before as he was getting his hands taped. Really, really nice guy. I mean, uh, he said he's going to beat me up if I didn't mention how good looking he was. So we'll get that out of the way. <laughs> but a guy like this who's, you know, an extremely nice guy, easy to work with, who's, uh, you know, got the look of a fighter this high level and this much success uh, in, in wrestling coming from that program. It's yeah. just, he's, he's got every, he's got all of it. Now he just needs to, you know, put it all together. Stand. And he'll get there. He'll get there for sure. Professor Joe Solis stands him back up. <laughs> when Kim Kimbo sliced one time by Houston Alexander, <laughs> and they were pretty tired in the third round. Oh, big right hand there from Kassar. But then right when the bell rings, both guys just drop, put their hands on their knees. I don't know if y'all saw, but Giantasio was looking up at our big screen, looking at the clock just for a moment, like, how much time's left? <laughs> <laughs> nice little single leg there from Kassar. 
And for those who don't know, having to like box and then grapple and then wrestle and then stand up and box, like that up-down work, is the most grueling cardio you'll ever do in your life. This is a new experience for Kassar. I did not expect to hear boos in this fight. But here we are, and a good learning moment for Anthony Kassar. Yeah, yeah. This is one of those things, you know, say he sticks with it, makes it to the UFC, he, he'll appreciate this fight so much. He'll even appreciate Joe standing him up, because he's got to feel, he's got to feel these feelings. And you can really only experience them in the cage. And the fact that he's doing it and still likely winning, I mean, that's, there's double value there. Yeah, not only that, you got to remember, Raheel, this is the Fury audience. You know, they're just not used to seeing fights like this. Yeah. And we got some bloodbaths yeah. today. I mean, even our amateur, our 115-pound girl amateurs were freaking throwing down. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure why they're banging out the clappers there. They still got 44 seconds left, and they're banging it out. It's been enough. It looks like they maybe corrected that. Yeah, I, I, they might They might have just been running and forgot it earlier. I don't know. Uh, but hey, 20 seconds left now. There's the official 10. Yeah, I mean, it looks like Anthony Gassar is going to pull this one off and, you know, pretty handily. I mean, it's not the finish that we kind of expected, but, I mean, he just brutalized... John Giantasio with his wrestling. And, uh, you know, good for John for sticking in there, uh, making this a fight. Yeah, really impressed with John, man. That was a lot of fun. He backed up his words and said, look, I'm going to go in there and fight. I know everyone's there to watch him, but I'm trying to win a fight too here. Yeah, and I think uh, I think uh, Anthony Gassar kept his promise to his fiance. It looks like he's pretty unscathed, not a, not a mark on his face. Maybe a little bit over the left eye, but that'll probably be gone in the next three weeks. Yeah. But Kassar does a good job of, of controlling. Of course, the, the wrestling was on point. Got takedowns anytime he wanted. Was able to do a lot of damage once they got down there, but, you know, that's part of the learning curve, Hill. You start to learn how to punch from those positions. You know, it's just once you start learning that, once you get into that, and once he does learn it, he's going to be a force at this 205-pound division at any level. Five There's that sneak attack. By yeah, that, that was it right there. As we look at our highlights, just want to remind you, we still have four more fights left on this awesome Sunday here in Houston. The much anticipated debut of Anthony Kassar goes all three rounds. Kassar dominating the fight, but maybe not like we expected, but. Yeah. The Fury FC debuts out of the way. Let's see how the judges scored it. Let's go inside to Wayne Leggett. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for your decision. Brought to you by Trade the Truth's new album, Stuck in Motion, available on streaming platforms everywhere. All three judges score the fight 30 to 27, declaring your winner by unanimous decision, Anthony Kassar! Congratulations to Anthony Kassar on picking up his second win. Alex is inside. You guys, I'm here with you, Anthony Kassar. Anthony, I know there is nothing easy about this whatsoever. You got the experience and you went the distance. Tell us how you're feeling right now. Yeah, John's a tough son of a bitch. Um, no one wanted to accept this fight, so I was on the sidelines for a year, so props to John for stepping up. Yeah, I was grateful for Fury. I'm sure you were too for finding an opponent. When do you want to fight again? March or April. I get to go get married to the love of my life in a few weeks. So... I promise you I stay pretty. That, Bo, am I still good? My face still good? Alright. Yeah, looking <laughs> sharp, man. Congratulations on the win. Can't wait to see you fight again. Anthony Kassar. You guys, I'm here with Bo Nickel as well. Bo, while I got you here, I'm sure all the fans are curious. You look sharp in your last fight. When can we see you in the octagon again? You know, uh, I'm just super pumped that Anthony got the win. Um, at the end of the day, uh, I don't think he performed as well as he wanted to, but he was off for a year, and... Uh, 
you know, it's just exciting to see him be able to come in here and compete. So that's what I'm focused on. Cool. Thank you, Bo. Can't wait to see you guys fight. All right. Congratulations to Anthony on picking up the win. We keep the card moving. Let's be our next fighter. I know we didn't get a chance to talk too much on the open about fights that we're excited about, but Sean Mora, Gabriel Wanderlei was my fight to watch. And we'll meet Gabe in a second, but Sean, three and one record, first time inside the Fury FC cage, has a really good Greco-Roman background. So he's ready to showcase what he has. I'm pumped to watch this kid in addition to Gabe. Yeah, this could be one of those fights. You know, Wonderlay is an amazing Brazilian jiu-jitsu grappler. Mora, great wrestler. I'm curious if their ground games are going to cancel out and we're going to see these guys box. I also wouldn't be surprised if we see a guard pull from Wonderlay as well. I mean, expect the unexpected in this one, especially in the grappling area because they have such different styles of effectively fighting on the ground. Had a really good successful amateur career, did Sean Mora. Has won belts and other promotions. Went four and one, Michael. So, you know, this young man has seen a lot of action. Yeah, he has, and all three of his wins are by decision. So he has gone the distance. He's got a lot of ring experience, uh, even in those four fights. At 27 years old, he's got his hands full here. But I'll tell you, Rio, if he can put, his, if he can, if he can finish Gabriel Wanderlei, this might be the best 135er in that division. Yeah, Raheel, I, I shared the same sentiment. I mean, this, this this fight was highlighted on my list as well. This will be a banger. All right, Sean Mora is inside. Let's meet his opponent. Please welcome Gabriel Wanderlei to the red corner. The Recife Shark. You know, since the first time we watched him fight, gentlemen, I've become a fan. Like, he... I hate showing bias or saying like I like this fighter, but we all have some favorites that we like to watch. Gabe is a young prospect on the rise, has wins over Ryland Melanson, which is a really good win. Karan Reed, who we talked about earlier, third time inside the Fury FC cage. Yeah, I'm with you, Raheel. This is one of my favorite fighters on here. And, you know, like I said, Sean Moore has got his hands full with Gabriel Wanderlei. Gibber Wanderlei, an ace on the ground, has got just dynamite striking. This guy is very, very exciting. And he's one of those guys you can't wait to see where he is when he's 10 fights in. Because he could easily be 10-0, 9-1, and fighting in the big show. Yeah, man, I've seen him pull guard, arm drag to the back in one motion, hit her naked chokes. I mean, this kid's good, and He's got a big frame for 135. He's tall, he's lean. And man, he's just one of those one of those kids. I'm sure he grew up in the gi, been grappling since he was a young child. Only 21 years old. Yeah, crazy. Gosh. Remember, after he got the win over Ryland in the post-fight interview, I was blown away, like, how mature this kid is. We see our Tale of the Tape brought to you by Sheath Underwear. The height advantage goes to Wanderlei, and even on the reach there, both fighters did make weight. Let's go inside for our official introductions for this band and wait. The battle. following contest brought to you by SheathUnderwear.com is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury FC Phantom Weight Division. Introducing your first competitor fighting out of the blue corner. This mixed martial artist stands five feet seven inches tall and he weighed in at 136 pounds. Fighting out of Miami, Florida. His professional record stands at three wins. Only one defeat. Here is Sean Mora. And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This freestyle fighter stands six feet tall, and he weighed in officially at 135.2 pounds. Fighting out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, by way of Recife, Brazil, he holds a perfect professional record. Three wins, no losses. Here is the Recife Shark, Gabriel Wanderley. Your referee in charge of the action, Jeff Rex Road. All right, blue gloves for Mora, red for 
Wanderlei, here we go, the Recife Shark. I'd be curious if these guys end up tying up, which I'm sure they will. You know, the Greco style of Mora with the overhooks and underhooks, and then the grappling style of Wanderlei. I'm just curious to see how that's gonna, you know, blend together. Oh. Rahil, you talked about the maturity of Wanderlei, and man, I just think that comes from a lifelong martial artist. I think getting that humility as a young guy, when you're a good athlete, when you're good at something, that there's always somebody there to instill that humility into you as you grow up. I think that's what makes you mature a lot as, uh, you know, as a young guy, and that's I think that's what you're seeing out of, out of Gabriel Wanderlei. I'd be curious. I, I figured with oh man, with just the, the dominant underhooks of the Greco style. If Wanderlei was going to have a lot of triangle opportunities because he got to close guard very fast. I can just see him wrapping the arms and just spamming triangle chokes. Mora's going to have to be on his A game submission defense wise tonight. I think Moore knows exactly what he's got in store with this fight tonight in Wanderlei. Moore doing a good job of staying in good position, staying postured up. Notice Mora's left hand pinning Wanderlei's right arm to the ground. That's an interesting way to stop them from controlling your arm. Control it first. And I'd say Wanderlei's best chance of catching a sub is going to be in this first when they're dry and fresh. I mean, as these guys get sweatier and more fatigued, it's going to be easier and easier to sit in the guard and just kind of pound away. Now, don't like that he's in the guard in this figure four. I just think it, you know, it does keep your opponent in the same spot, and it, you know, controls him a little bit, but it also it's impossible to move yourself whenever you're in a figure four. Yeah, yeah, it limits the articula articulation of your hips quite a, quite a bit. Like, you're, you're quicker on one side, but you're way slower on the other side. I'm also not a huge fan of body, body triangles from the guard. Yeah, I think these loose hips like this, these fluid hips, I think that's the way to go, especially whenever somebody's a good wrestler because, I mean, you, you got to be ready and take advantage of those spots when they come because they're not going to be open long. No, not at all. Really good pressure from Mora. A decent elbow. Notice that, that hand post. That's, that's something I've not seen before. It's cut the angle for the arm bar, but Mora's kind of digging his head nice and low. I'll tell you, this is... Pretty, this is more fatiguing for Wanderlei on bottom than it is for Mora on top. Another good elbow there for Mora. Because you got to think Wanderlei's core, his legs, his upper body are all very much so firing off and engaged right now. Diaphragm's compressed, absorbing the body weight of Mora. Well, Mora's got to keep his base on his knees, but Mora's got to be just aware defensively. This is also one of those things. Mora's got to be pretty sharp for the entire round on top, whereas Wanderlei needs just one opening. Yeah, that was going to be my next point, Michael, is how tough is that where you are applying pressure, but at the same time you've got a savage ready to pull a submission any time. Yeah, and he can feel it right now. Like, he can feel what his limits are there it is. Oh, on top of Wanderlei, and this is he may have just reached it because yeah, this is very, four. very tight. And the other hand is stuffed. Yeah, and oh, Wanderlei man. can oh. also straighten that arm. Look at Moore's left hand. It's wedged in between his own legs, between Wanderlei's legs. Yeah, that's going to be a very difficult to get out of. I had a prediction. I thought this fight would end by triangle if it was finished. And Moore is You had to say shallow. it out louder. It doesn't count. Man, it's, <laughs> yeah, it was shallow. <laughs> Moore did a good job identifying it. I'll bet you worked some serious triangle on our defense this fight camp. Because he didn't seem phased. He didn't panic not once. And again, it's another indication to Mora what his limits are whenever he's on top down there because, you know, like I said, he can feel what his limits are when he's down there. You can feel when you're out of position. You can feel when your weight's over too far. You can feel it almost immediately. You can feel it whenever your opponent's setting you up, whenever those hips are open. I mean, you can feel it the whole time. So it is kind of an, an in and out, up and down, you know, posture in, posture up uh, kind of feeling that you have to do from the top which seems to come naturally for wrestlers. So I'm sure Moore is used to it, but came very, very close to getting finished there. 
Yeah, and then if you look at some really, really high-level grapplers in the UFC jiu-jitsu style, I'm thinking Charles Oliveira and Damian Maya. One thing they would do, they would use their wrestling against wrestlers to get to their backs. Mm. Almost never will you see these guys really play a good closed guard game. So some, that's some adaptations Wanderlei's going to have to make moving forward. Control pretty much the entire round was Wanderlei. Good job by Sean Mora. Then you get a guy like Brian Ortega. He's probably, he's actually probably one of the better closed guard players. And his closed guard is so good, he could actually strike really freely. Because he wouldn't mind if he got taken down. He's trying with your guys. And I'll tell you, Wanderlei, this was, this was good. But you can see how the right shoulder of Mora was out. That's what I meant when I said it was shallow. I think Mora knew that. I think Wanderlei also knew it because he didn't start cranking yeah. on that straight arm bar. Yeah, I thought that's how it was going to finish when I first saw it. I thought he was going to finally straighten that arm out, and then the, he wouldn't be able to relieve the pressure. But Moore doing a good job with his wrestling. Again, he's got some slippery shoulders. <laughs> he's good at kind of shrugging those shoulders up and making that one with their neck and ears. And, you know, once you get to that position, it, makes, it becomes really difficult to triangle, even if you're already in it. All right, we'll see what adjustments both fighters made in between rounds. Round two, mouthpieces are good. Jeff Flexro, let's get it going. Sean Moore coming right back in, hanging in the pocket with Gabriel Wanderlei. Oh, hey, oh. nice jump knee there. Oh. There was a guard pull. I think he was actually kind of doomed in that body lock. I think that was some damage mitigation. Yeah, I think he wanted oh. to make sure Sharp that angle. Oh. That's oh. a deep arm bar. That's it. That's, That's it. a deep arm bar. Ooh. Oh, man, he Switching. turned the angle. He turned the thumb. He's on another plata. Oof, man. Mora is, is on point today with the submission defense because he has been in the bear trap a couple of times was able to find his way out. I mean, that was a good arm bar. Yeah, that was very, very tight. And just does a good job of, like, keeping his arm in a bendable position because there is a certain point of no return where once you're, I mean, you have to freak out to get out. <laughs> I mean, you just, it's just a, it's a squirm, just a, a, you know, trying to explode out of that arm bar. But, man, if you don't, it makes it worse. But doing a good job of keeping his arm in a bendable position. Now in this omoplata, Timed it perfectly, too. Man, good defense by Sean Mora. It's a strong front headlock here from Mora. Yeah, even though Mora's had good defense, you don't want to keep playing that game with somebody like Gabriel Wanderlei. You do not want to keep getting in those triangles. You don't want to keep getting in position to be submitted because he will find that spot. That's one thing Damian Maya would do is Ooh. from single legs, he would look to take the back. In this case, Wanderlei jumped a triangle. Never know what's going to come from Gabriel Wanderlei. <laughs> That's why he's one of our favorite fighters on the roster. And again, talked about a little bit earlier about the 125 division. The 135 division is also very, very stacked. It is. Good elbow there for Mora. Just past the halfway point of round two. And I, I expected to see a, a, you know, more of a striking match between these two, but, you know, with both these guys, their, their strengths, if you want to call them that, they're grappling. Both these guys are testing each other's strengths against each other. Yeah. And man, and wrestling does come out on top a lot, especially when the wrestler has good submission awareness and defense. There's another good angle on an arm bar. The K just shutting Wanderlei down just a bit, especially now. If Moore can pin Wanderlei's left hip against on the cage, he's going to kill the arm bar. I think Wanderlei acknowledged that and bailed.
Oh, no attempt again. Oh, we're gonna see Wanale try to use trying to use his left foot to hook under the tricep to open up that arm to throw the right leg over the shoulder. So we call it the scarecrow guard. Now, very, very tricky jiu-jitsu from Gabriel Wanderlei. There's the head pressure of Mora. I mean, he's just making this as uncomfortable as possible for Wanderlei. Mora trying to stay busy, peppering in some shots to the ribs. And if this continues, Alex, Wanderlei's going to be down two rounds to none going yeah. into the third. The second time Rexford's warned the guys to improve their position. More so Mora. I mean, Wanda Ladson was winning the striking exchange, but Mora just was able to get him down both times he tried. All right, back to the feet we go for the final 25 seconds or so. Oh. He's in on the guillotine, but it's just not enough time. Man, I mean, that Waterloo, he really jumps on every sub he can. All right, round three, here we come. We'll see if there's a big moment in that round. Sean Mora doing a good job of negating any kind of offensive game plan of the Recipe Shark. No, the receiver shark has tried to pull the submissions, but it's been all Mora. Yeah, we saw Wanderlei. I think he pulled guard there because he knew he was going to get slammed. He yeah. did not want he did not want Mora to be able to pass as he slammed him, which exactly what would have happened if his legs would have stayed in the same position, very close on that arm bar. And you see, I tell everyone, if your palm is facing the ceiling, your arm is not able to be arm barred. If you have your arm this way you can arm bar you turn your hands up this way and your palms are toward the ceiling no matter what position it's in if you can get it toward the ceiling it's almost you're almost unable to arm bar that and it, your body contorts in the right position to be able to get out of it most of the time and then you have high level guys who will adjust to it but still i mean it's uh it's very very good defense here by sean morris so far i mean yeah he's, he's in a Fully figure four triangle, fully extended arm bar. Did a good job working his way out of both of them. Yeah, I think Wanderlei has got to get a finish here to win this. A couple good right hands from Wanderlei. Recipe Shark regarded as one of the top 135 prospects under the age of 25. Looking for that big finish in round three. Sean Mora looking for the big upset. Oh, I was too shallow ah. on that one. Yeah, Sean Mora is doing such a good job of level changing, closing the distance, and then just staying in good position as he gets those takedowns. Yeah, never really bitten off more than he can chew. He's going to control every, every position that he's put himself in with his wrestling. Yeah, and even when he's gone a little too far, you know, and got in that arm bar and got in that triangle, and he still kept himself in good position to be able to escape. The Miami fighter, Sean Mora, training at Freedom Fighter MMA. Started his pro career three fight win streak, coming off that loss, trying to get back to his winning ways. Yeah, I don't know exactly what happened, Raheel, but on his last fight, it says he lost by gouging. So I'm not exactly sure what, how that is if he got disqualified because it's, uh, it's, it says he lost by gouging. So, yeah, huh? I'm not exactly sure what that means, Alex. I, I was looking for that uh, fight was earlier this year in August, so you know, just a couple months ago, against uh, Usama Rahman, 
I could not find the fight. Yeah, I couldn't either. Which, by the way, is a huge advantage for all the fighters out there. <laughs> One of the great things about Fury is all your fights are available, not only on UFC Fight Pass, on YouTube. You can find it. Yeah, yeah at least tell us where to find them. You don't have yeah. to give them to your opponent, but at <laughs> yeah, least yeah. tell us. We, it, <laughs> that's a big part of our job we go back and watch these fights right before we get to call them but again i can't thank ufc fight pass for putting such a great search feature on the website and the app decent oh we got a figure four Here again we go again okay. plata style got a fully locked in a plata oh never mind so that's what i mean third round sweaty fatigue a lot easier to pull out arm bars, triangles, and applauders. I'm yeah. surprised Morris dip, digging his head back in there. Yeah, I think Wonderlay's trying to free the other leg so he can pass that other leg around his head. He's trying for another triangle there. And in between the last fight and this fight, we've seen a lot of that time. Yep. Trying to spin it into a positive. <laughs> the fans not as happy or positive about it as I am. A little over a minute here left, and, and Wanderlei has just got to let it all hang out. It wouldn't surprise me if they got stood up again here. And if they do, at the 50-second mark, I would assume they're going to get stood up if it stays like this. But... If they do, Vanderlei, Wanderlei needs to really turn it up, try to make something happen here. And yeah, Moore's been a little more active this round with his ground and pound from guard. See some blood coming out of the nose of Wanderlei. Is there a big submission left in the bag of the Recife Shark under 30 seconds? That's going to be so tough. Yeah. The pressure has been unreal from Sean Mora. Yeah, Sean Mora, just too much pressure today for Gabriel Wanderlei. All right, so to the judges' scorecards we go. Not many highlights from that round. No. That's really the wrestling of uh, Mora that was able to kind of dictate the fight. <laughs> He's able to get on top and stay on top. You know, a fight like that is needed for young fighters. A 21-year-old yeah. is going to learn from it. But Sean Mora, the story here. Yeah, Sean Mora celebrating up here on the cage, getting in front of that Fury camera. Obviously, his his team thinks he won this fight pretty handily. I, I would say I agree with him. Yeah, that he won all three rounds, and uh, you know at least two of the rounds, and you know one was very close, and uh, you know had a couple of submission attempts in it from Wanderlei, but you know like I said, Mora keeping his his body constantly in a position to be able to get out of those if he got in trouble and uh but got himself in trouble in very few situations here all of this trouble came on the feet alex and you know but he got rid of the trouble pretty quick by taking getting these takedowns i don't think he missed on one takedown I think he got him down every now time he yeah, was first and only shot each round yeah very impressive for sean mora First loss of Gabriel Wanderlei's career, if it goes that way. Hasn't, won, hasn't lost since he was an amateur when he went 7-1. and one. All right, Wayne is inside. Got to get the selfies. <laughs> You're feeling really confident, right? Let's see how the judges scored it. Here's Wayne Leggett. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of combat, we go to the judges' scorecards for your decision. 
Brought to you by OnlyFans. All three judges score the fight 30 to 27, declaring your winner by unanimous decision, Sean Mora! <laughs> Sean's corner, really excited. A big win there. Yeah, as they should be. I mean, that's a big win for, for Sean Mora. That puts him right at the top of the heap in that 135 division. All right, three more fights left, gentlemen. Oh, there's the flip. Loading up, excited. All right, let's meet our next fighter in just a second. Here's Wade. Please welcome to the blue corner, Gerardo Granier. Oh, man, get ready for a good flyweight fight because Gerardo Granier is making his way to the cage. Yeah, Gerardo Graniel, uh last fight was in back in April. This guy has, you know, in 15 fights, Alex, his uh, opponent's combined record is 98 and 47, and 20 of those 47 in his opponent's losses come from two fighters. One 12 losses, one eight. Oh, so, man. Um, and all of them had winning records. He's only fought two people in his entire career with losing records. One was a four and six, and one was 0 and one in his debut. So yeah. this guy has only fought top level competition. He's fought whoever they put in front of him. Just a good, good all around fighter. And I expect this is the one that I had circled as to be fighter of the night. This has the potential to be, although that's a lot to live up to tonight. Yeah. You know, besides the last two fights that were mostly wrestling, everything before that has been basically a, a fight of the night candidate. So this one's no different. Yeah, we really did open up the card with a potential fight of the night with Javier Cepeda taking on Justin Longoria. But now Gerardo Graniel. You know, you mentioned his record. You mentioned he's fought everybody they put up in front of him. He's only 24 years old, 16th professional fight. That's incredible. Yeah, and fighting a guy, you know, Luis Garuli, he knows that 11 and 4 that he's the more experienced guy and a win over a guy like Lewis Garuli, even though he's only 6-0, and oh, that's a that's a hard-fought 6-0. Yeah. and oh. that's a, This would be a big win for Gerardo. The Terrier making his way inside. He is there. So let's meet his opponent. Here's Wayne. Please welcome to the red corner, Luis Garuli. Luis Garuli. Grim Garule, 6-0, third time inside the Fury FC cage. Coming off that win against the gentleman, Jonathan Davis. Going the distance back in August at Fury FC 82. Yeah, Luis Garule, man, this is one of my favorite guys on the roster because I was, this guy starts out at a pretty steady pace, continues to move forward and gets stronger and stronger and stronger as the fight goes on. It's very, very unique. For the guys, especially in this weight class. Yeah, he's got wild durability as well. That's something I learned in his last fight. Like, pace doesn't fade, doesn't really show damage at all, doesn't get tired. It's a bit like a tank for a, a flyweight. Now, granted, he did thrust weight, but I'm sure he'll get that under control next time. If I'm not mistaken, when he fought last, he was at 135. And he was not a small 35er. Yeah, yeah and we asked him last time if he was going to stay at 135, and he said he, he, that he wasn't sure yet took this fight at 125 busted weight a little bit but you know that's something definitely 6 and 0 or 16 and 0 if you're not making weight you're not going to the next level now our tail the tape brought to you by howler head whiskey as you mentioned did miss weight did garule even on the height the reach advantage going to gerardo graniel we'll talk a little bit more about that 135 division but first let's get our official introductions the following contest brought to you by howler head whiskey is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury FC Flyweight Division. Introducing your first competitor, fighting out of the blue corner. This mixed martial artist is five feet, five inches tall, and he weighed in at a perfect 125 pounds. Fighting out of Ciudad del Carmen Campeche, Mexico. His professional record stands at 11 wins, only four losses. Here is Gerardo. Terrier 
Grande! And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This freestyle fighter stands five feet five inches tall, and he weighed in officially at 128.8 pounds. Fighting out of Inglewood, Colorado, he holds a perfect professional record, six wins, no losses. Here is Luis Grim Gurule. Your referee in charge, Patrick Patline. All right, flyweights going at it. Patrick Patlan with the assignment. Blue gloves for Graniel, red for Grim Garule. Both these guys are acting like they were the main event there for a second, <laughs> waiting for the final instructions. Yeah, Garule just has one of those body types to where he just he wears shots well. Doesn't really have a lot of facial expressions. You can't tell if he's hurt or tired, happy or sad. I mean, he's just kind of in your face, likes to fight. I'm so curious to see both of these guys work off of moving forward. Move and constantly applying pressure. So what's going to give? This is going to be fun. Yeah, honestly, it's kind of whoever's like willing to, to take a shot to give one, oddly enough. And you see Gorilla is the one on the front foot. And it's almost like he's pressuring with good defense. He's checking kicks, blocking shots. He's not only really entering with punches, he's entering with defense. So once we can like block something that's thrown wide or just make his opponent miss, then he can counter. Yeah, one thing that Garuli has down early in his career, Alex, is the ability to keep his eyes open when he's going in and exchanging with his opponent. That is something that you have to learn. You have to condition yourself for. If you don't, you will close your eyes whenever you're going in there. You will do it to the wrong person, and you will wake up on yeah. your back wondering what happened. Nice. There's a good left hook there from Gerardo. Gerardo, a little gamesmanship. Guru Lake, excuse me, saying, eh, it didn't bother me too yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> oh. See, that was a crafty knee. Now, I think that would hurt. Uh, Gerardo a little more than he's showing right now. Yeah, yeah, you can see in his eyes. Yeah, you can see in his eyes also his elbows tighten up just a little bit. It looks like he thought the exchange was over, so he relaxed on the exit and was met with a stiff knee. Nice little slip in from Garule. That's what that pressure gives you. You're always in, in range for a counter punch. Trick is to not get a hit. Oh, Ooh, nice right hand. Man. That staggered Gerardo a little bit. Yeah, Gurley points at him and says, I'm going to do that again. Oh, hey, nice high kick there from Gerardo. And decent right hook from Gurule. Just past the halfway mark of round one. Man, if you guys have never, you know, sparred with or fought a guy with a freshly shaven head, it's weird that prickly hair, that will, like, Velcro burn you. That will razor burn you bad. It's way more uncomfortable than you'd ever think. I mean, we talked about that last time during Garula's fight. Oh, he yeah. knows how to use it, too, remember? <laughs> yeah, that's probably the number one complaint for my training partners. Like, <laughs> Mike, either let it grow out or shave every day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, both guys landed there. Jordan's thrown down. Notice that was Jordan's first time really coming forward. And what we've seen from Garuli's opponents in the past is, man, there's just like, all of a sudden they're taking a deep breath, like, oh my God, does he ever, <laughs> does he ever stop? Yeah because they hit him with everything they've got, and he just keeps coming. One minute left in round one. 
And he mentioned Gorilla style, but that's the same thing, Graniel. He will be the same thing. Like, I'm going to keep coming. I don't care. I'm not sure what the referee was reaching in there for. It's like he reached in there and moved the fingers away. Oh, see, right there. He like dipped into a hard right hook, didn't even phase him. Landed right on his face. Yeah, no swelling, no mark, no nothing yet. And beyond that, you can like trick the judges. They, they, they don't think the punch landed. When that landed, I mean, I was right in front of me. Gurley's body language is really strong. That's that durability that I was talking about, the pressure you were talking about, Mike. Gurley just like, has a good build and really good mannerisms for combat in terms of not showing any damage. And that was some high level striking there. You look at our round one highlights. Now both these guys landed well in this round. And you saw there's that shot out. As you see those elbows come in, you can <laughs> tell that hurt. Raniel just a little bit more than he showed. And then again, nice combination from Graniel, but Luis Garulli, no worse for the wear, jumping right back in the pocket. See a little cut over the left eye of John Hill. Oh, oh, yeah. And there's the uncuttable Luis Garulli, seemingly. Unfazed. Graniel, those blue gloves, blue shorts, ready to go. And Gurule with a big overhand right there. Yeah, that pressure ability from Gurule, really strong. And running after him now. Yeah, Gurule may have seen enough. He <laughs> it's like he's coming here with, with intent, bad intentions here to begin the second round. But the weirdest thing, Graniel's like, okay, cool, come on, <laughs> let's do it. Yeah, both these guys, very seasoned fighters. Man, oddly enough, Garule pressures so much, but his head's never really in the same spot. And when punches do get thrown at him, he like moves with them. He rolls with the shots really well. Like notice that every single time a punch is thrown at him, just watch his head movement. He's always going with the strike, even on that kick. He's rarely out of position. <laughs> and he has his own commentary also. He <laughs> lets him know they didn't do anything good. Facial play by play. Rule stalking Graniel again. Yeah, Graniel seems a little frustrated, and I don't blame him. It's kind of hard to find a mark, hard to come forward. And every Gurule fight we've called, we've seen that exact frustration from every opponent yeah. because it's just relentless pressure. And he's constantly talking to you throughout, letting you know whatever you throw at him, whether it did or didn't, whether you... <laughs> Whatever you threw at him didn't hurt. Nope. I told you we talk about the 135 division. 6-0 record here for Garule. Has fought at both 125-135. I almost have a feeling that if he gets a big finish and still has a lot of work left to do, he could be in consideration for that 135 belt. Yeah, he does have to figure out what weight class he wants to fight in. I mean, you know, it doesn't count at flyweight if you don't make flyweight, you know, so... Yeah, I was going to say, they're going to figure that out for him if he can't make, make yeah, it at 125. Yeah. And 135 is going to be his weight, which, I mean, he looks, you know, he looks he's fine at 135. We say that, then we just had a couple of six-foot-tall 135ers. Yeah. So he's definitely got the height more like a flyweight. 
but I mean, look how good Volkanovski is at 45. He's only one inch taller than Garule at 5'6". And that's unreal. <laughs> so, I mean, height's not everything, especially being a yeah. managed range as well as Volk does. And that's one thing Garule does. He manages range well. You, you, you see his opponents don't really hit him with a lot of jabs. And like when you get some impression, you just stick a bunch of jabs in their face. But Garule is so good at slipping and ripping. Like you see, he threw the jab there and just slipped to the inside, threw a right hand over the top. See, every time you try to get him off of the jab, you're getting hit and getting pressured backwards. Very frustrating. Mm. Yeah, this style is what you saw is how you saw Sean Strickland beat Israel Adesanya. That's exactly right. It's the exact same style. It is in your face. It's constant pressure. It's good head movement. It's rolling with those punches. It's frustrating your opponent. Oh. It's making him try to find spots out of position. Forty-five seconds left in round two. Yeah, and even though he hasn't landed the giant shot, Garuli is taking over in this second round. That was a crafty way. Graniel used the cage to not get taken down. They pushed his heel off of it to give him some downward pressure. Punishing right hand there, slapping the hands down of Graniel and coming right over the top of that right hand. Man, just a technician, Luis right. Garule. Yeah, Garule right to his seat, good posture. Still looks very, very fresh. Like Garule's winning this fight. I mean. If you want a dirty box with him, he can beat you there. You want to punch with him, he can beat you there. Even when you're landing, like you said, Alex, was, he's rolling with the punches and they're just not doing any damage. And that constant pressure there, you can see Raniel just trying to get some space. Just seeing if he can get those punches to stop. Yeah, it. Granielle's coaches, what do you what do you tell him? I mean, really, what do you what do you tell him? His best work he's doing is coming forward, but he's trying to come forward and Grule is just shutting it down. He has one more round to figure it out. And 24 year old Gerardo Graniel. Hey, that was a good right hand there from Graniel. He really didn't wave that one off. He felt that one. <laughs> yeah, he did. Oh, man. Oh. All right. Graniel's <laughs> fighting. He's, he's making some adaptations. This is the best moment of the fight by far for him. Dirty boxing here up against the cage. Some knees to the thigh. I, I know those don't look like much. You catch it at the right angle, those knees to the quad. That's something I use in training a lot. Mm -hmm. I have pissed a lot of training partners off with those. And I wear knee pads. This friend I was talking to one of my 85ers. I was like, what's the worst shot you got hit with in the whole fight? He's like, honestly, I need him in the quad, and he need me back. Ooh. And that's the only bruise I got. Those knees to the quad can be brutal. Those knees to the quad and those foot stomps and all those little things that you think are just annoying, and they will have an effect on you, and they do hurt. 
Graniel's landing that right hand. It's, it's the, that's like the third time it landed on a three punch combination. It was like a right, left, right. That's when he's finding the mark. Because Grulik kind of like rolls with the first couple. But then, then you're just like to toying with fate at that point. You know, if you zig when, when you should have zagged, that's when that punch lands hard. Nice little double jab to the right hook from Garule. Oh, big right hand oh. from Garule. Good little step in elbows. That pressure from Garule is relentless. Man, a lot of shots have been landed on both sides. Both guys are wearing the damage really, really well. Ooh. Oof. That Grunel with that cut over the left eye, but it hasn't really affected it at all. I mean, no. The blood hasn't been leaking. They've done a good job of controlling that cut. Hasn't gotten any bigger. Even those flush connects, Grunel hasn't shown much after. Like, he wasn't like, oh, that stunned me or anything. He was just, it's fine. Like another day at the park. <laughs> Crew legs just in his face. Nice left hook. Under two minutes left in round three. Really keeps finding space with those little pop shots there. Landing on the chin. You can see that they're landing. Oh, Ooh, big elbow. No, no, I was just clean. Oh, nice left hand there by Garuli. Garule. Decent right hand there from Carniel. I mean, it's a, a fun fight, competitive fight, but just Garule just, just in his face more. I mean, if the striking was even, the pressure of Garule wins it. But I think Garule is even out striking him. If anything, <laughs> it's one of Graniel's better rounds. Yeah. Oh, oh, big right hand. Really lands right behind the ear, the left ear of Graniel. Does it again. Overhand right. Less than one minute. Ooh. I hit him in the back fist. Ooh. Oh, big right there. <laughs> <laughs> he can shake that one off all he wants. That right hand landed. Yeah. We saw it. Under 30 seconds left oh. in the fight. Oh, man. Oh, man. Gurule's hitting him. Oof, oof. Man, you can just see this. That Gurule loves this part of the fight. Now the damage is showing on Grania a little bit more. Shoot. <laughs> Good scrap from those boys. Man, what a fight. Yeah, a lot of respect there between both competitors. To the judges' scorecards, here we go again. Man. I'll tell you what, man. If Gerardo Graniel takes on 99.5% of the other flyweights at Fury, probably gets a good win. His style is really nice. Yeah, yeah he's big for the weight class, too. Now, Luis Garule is the top of the heap in the 125 and 135 division. But like I said, Alex, I mean, if he can't make that weight, he consistently misses it, then he's going to have to go up to 135, where I think he's a legit competitor. Oh, we got a little uh, action behind us. As you guys see the highlights on your screen. That's not well, what they want to uh, be fooling around with. I don't want to make fun of anybody, but I see a one-armed guy over there starting a fight. Yeah, it's bold. Chairs are being grabbed. Okay. Well, with, while all that happens, we're still awaiting the judges' decision. Three staff over here trying to keep some order. 
right. You guys, sorted that out? Yeah, there's contracts for that. <laughs> Well, while we have you and we wait, the judges score cards, get it all calculated. Wayne's going to head inside. Yeah, it may take a little longer. They're a little distracted yeah. right now, but. Do want to send some love to our social media team. Make sure you're following Fury Fighting Championship on social media, at Fury FC on Instagram, Fight News, exclusive content available there. Also, our OnlyFans. You can follow us there for exclusive content as well. And don't forget to subscribe to the Fury Unleashed podcast. Available everywhere you get your podcasts. All right, Wayne is inside. Let's see how the judges scored it. Here's Wayne. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of combat, we go to the judges' scorecards for your decision. Brought to you by Howler Head Whiskey. All three judges score the fight 29 28, declaring your winner by unanimous decision, Luis Grim Guruli. Congratulations to Grim Guruli. Keeping that record perfect, 7-0. All right, let's go to our co-main event in just a second. Final pictures. Got to get the victory selfie. All right, let's meet our next fighter. Please welcome Shane Torres to the blue corner. Shane Torres, four time inside the Fury FC cage. Currently riding a two fight losing streak. Has, you know, those tough losses against Kale Moniz, Abdul Kamara, his last fight, but has a really big win over. Yeah, Cameron Smotherman, yep. Cameron Smotherman, one of our favorite hey fighters guys, on this roster. Let's keep the fights in the cage. Don't be an asshole. And uh, you know, both these actually both these guys have wins over Cameron Smotherman. But Shane Torres on that two fight losing streak. You know, he started out four and one, highly touted prospect. Everybody, you know, was was I mean, in 135 division was worried about this guy, Alex. Yeah, he will use a really heavy wrestling game plan, and uh, not the most active wrestling. Um, honestly, hopefully he's made those adjustments. But I'll tell you, he's fighting Carlos Jimenez. I don't care what your style is. Jimenez is always in the most absolutely insane fights you'll ever see. In his last fight, his knee's like blown out and he still ends up, I think, getting a triangle choke win. I mean, yeah. he just finds ways to make in insanity happen in the cage. Shane Torres is inside. Let's meet his opponent. Please welcome to the red corner, Carlos Jimenez. <laughs> Carlos Jimenez, always bringing that huge crowd. Training at four outs. H-Town is ready to see Carlos put on. Seventh time inside the Fury FC cage, Michael. Yeah, Carlos Jimenez, like you said, Alex, always an exciting fight. We wanted to make sure I gave a shout out to his wife and kids and his twin brother, Four Ounce Fight Club, Bold uh, Fitness, PSI Hydraulic, Texas Arsenal, and his him and his brothers, Trucking Company, Jimenez, Double Trouble Trucking, all sponsors for this fight. And Carlos Jimenez is ready to roll, Alex. Yeah, man, I like I like Carlos Jimenez. He's just a fun dude. He's a nice dude, salty dude kind of guy. Fights his butt off. Fights because he enjoys it. You know, includes his family, includes his his friends and his coaches. I mean, he's a, he's a fun guy. He's like a really good example of like just a good local martial artist fighting for the experience. And he's done so good for himself as a pro. You know, I don't know what his expectations were. You know, I don't know if I had any personally, but man, he's always exceeded them. His fights are fun. He's a dog. He will not quit. 
and just one of his last fights, I, it looked like his knee was blown out. And like, okay. if your knee's blown out, like, call it. And he did, he found a way to win. I mean, really cool. Yeah, against Christian Lopez at Challenger Series 4, around the two minute mark in round one, like, kind of messed up his knee there, but you know what? Got the round two tap, and that's what matters. Yeah, he's much like Cameron Smotherman, where <laughs> they'll get in some trouble and then just come back out of nowhere and start blasting and end up winning the fight. Our tale today brought to you by Live Oak Texas Vodka, the reach advantage, height advantage for the 36-year-old Carlos Jimenez. Both fighters did make weight. Let's get our official co-main event introductions. The following contest brought to you by Live Oak Texas Vodka is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury FC Phantom weight division, and it is your co-main event of the evening. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. This mixed martial artist stands five feet, six inches tall, and he weighed in at 134.2 pounds. Fighting out of Santa Cruz, California, he holds a professional record of four wins, three losses. Here is Shane Torres. And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This four ounce fighter stands five feet, nine inches tall, and he weighed in officially at 134.6 pounds. Fighting out of Waller, Texas, he holds a professional record of five wins, only one defeat. This is Carlos Jimenez. Wow. Your referee in charge of the action, oh. Professor Joe Solis. This crowd has been waiting all night for Carlos Jimenez. Red gloves for Jimenez, blue for Shane Torres. <laughs> Carlos Jimenez starts off with two low calf kicks, Alex. Yeah, he doesn't really pace himself, he just likes to throw down. This guy's got so many fans here. Both so guys land. Shane Torres in his last fight taking on Abdul Kamara. Did a lot of the same, trying to close the distance, keep good pressure. Got caught with three seconds left. And it was just out cold. It's a bad one, I remember that. It's kind of what put Kamara on the radar. Is he just doing a good job defending these takedowns? Posting when he needs to, punching when he can. Staying heavy with his hips. Fallen's Fight Club has always had really good grappling. Like, better grappling than nothing they should have, but they've always had like ridiculously good grappling. I think their team captain, Jenna Pineda, I mean, he was always such a brutal submission guy. But, I mean, they're always good with their wrestling, crafty with their takedowns and takedown defense and especially crafty with their submissions. We saw Rommel earlier today, the amateur, getting that straight ankle lock. Uh, Shane Torres is taking a lot of punishment <laughs> here to try to get this takedown. Yeah. I was gonna say, he's he, getting beat up. Yeah, he may want to try to break and try this again. Just complete it. We are right in front of the Jimenez fan corner. We hear the screams and cheers. Yeah, you can undoubtedly hear that through our microphones because they are literally eight feet behind <laughs> us. And there are 60 of them. <laughs> I love it. So, you know, this is some of the criticism I know Torres has gotten in the past. You know, he'll, he's able to use his wrestling to get the fights to the ground, but we just, we got to see activity. Yeah, when you don't, when you're, when you're not extremely active on there, when it, on the ground, whenever you do start to become active, you create a lot of space, and so it's just one of those things you've got to work on punching from the ground, keeping your hips heavy and still being able to punch, figuring out where you can post and where you can't. All those important features of of you know learning effective ground and pound.
chain bleeding. Definitely some blood on the back of Jimenez. <laughs> Honestly, CJ was hitting him a bunch yeah. when he was clinched up on the cage. Yeah, remember, M Michael, he took a lot of damage to finish that takedown. Like, CJ's landed a lot more strikes getting taken down than Shane has on top. And yeah, it's the nose. It's the nose of choice. It's bleeding. Torres is in full yeah. mount now. Let's see what he can do with the Shane Torres. Trying to get the back. See if CJ can't hit a reversal as Torres tries to fight for back control. I mean, CJ's all but out of there. He's got to get his, his head high. He's got to get his hips higher than Torres' hips. And he got the reversal. Oh, he's got to navigate his way out of this arm bar. And he did it. Got a little bit of another plot to worry about, but he's going to not let him triangle. CJ's on top. Oh. <laughs> That's such a risky move. That's such a CJ move right there. Finds his way out. That reversal was very important. The fact that CJ's on top doing damage, I and mean, I think if he can finish here, it's going to secure this round. What he's got to not do is kick him in the cup or the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> CJ's laughing at him. And is in there having a ball. Kicks him right in the butt. That's so funny. Just teeing off on the butt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've seen it all today. He just one thing that Jimenez does, he just puts it together in the cage. It's not always the prettiest, it's not always the most technical, but man, he finds ways to win. I mean, I think I think he wins that round kind of easily, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, Michael? I, on damage alone, I mean I think he I think he wins that. He you know, there was a couple of submission attempts, but they were really weak submission attempts and Never really seemed like he was in trouble ever. And, you know, like you talked about, Torres getting to some dominant positions from his wrestling, but really not doing anything with him. See, it looked like he was going to get his heel caught up in there and maybe maybe have Torres go for a heel hook. Never went for it. Trapped his leg really for no reason. Really had nothing from there. See what CJ can do now. What adjustments he's made. And for Shane Torres, if he does get this fight back to the ground, has to show a lot more work, a little bit more damage. Nice little left hook there from CJ. Oh, a nice right hand from CJ. And a good right hand oh. from Shane. Oh, he's got oh. Shane rocked. Yep, there it is. There's that ninja choke. He's got to get his head stuck in the hole. All right, the head's in the hole. He's not quite under the chin. <laughs> His hands are not together. I don't think we're going to see that front choke here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it looks like he's still got the chin. He's got it out now, but yeah, I think he missed an opportunity there. Shane Torres was wobbled, went down to his knee, came right back up, but CJ kind of giving him some space and some air to breathe, and now here we are. And I like whenever somebody's got their knees together like this, is if CJ would just put his hand under his armpit, make him post on one side or the other, attack that arm, or once he posts over there, that's gonna give you the space to be able to pull your legs out, get to your hip and scramble. Yeah, he's gotta clear at least one knee line to make a post and get out of it. That's exactly how you troubleshoot these. 
weird figure four mounts, these knee pinch mounts. If you can just focus on one leg, not both, but one, and you can use it as a wedge and create some space. Yeah, he's got to get Shane Toyer as an off-center to be able to do that. He needs him to post with that right arm in this case because his head's on the other side. So that right arm posting out, that's the best position to be able to go with him, keep pushing him over there, put some weight on that hand, get to your hip, pull that bottom leg out, and you're, you're in business. I hear pull his ear. Yeah, I think so. Uh, <laughs> which, you know, I'm not saying it's not a good technique. Now, CJ needs to get out of here. Two minutes left in this second round. He does have one leg free. We may see a ref stand up here if nothing really happens. I'm sure she's, CJ would appreciate that. He's got the wizard. He's building his post. He's almost out of there. Yeah, Carlos doing a good job of keeping his other leg out of there. Shane Torres trying to stuff that leg between. He got it there again. That's a very tough position for Carlos Jimenez. He's going to lose this round pretty handily if he doesn't get out of here. Yeah. Just can't solve it. <laughs> Shane Torres coming off those two losses. In pretty devastating fashion to Kale Moniz and Abdul Kamara. Got finished in both of them. And oh, wow. 20 seconds left. He's throwing them out. Oh. 10 seconds left. Oh. Shane Torres landing here. It's a big round for Shane Torres, Alex. <laughs> yeah, it was. I don't know if CJ was hurt or was just scrapping. Yeah, I think he was. I don't know, man. Going for it's it. hard to tell. Probably a little of both, but <laughs> yeah. You could definitely tell his legs were wobbly, but also never stopped throwing punches. So CJ Jimenez. Finishing the round in a little bit of trouble. Needs to come out with some vigor in this third round. You see Shane Torres was a little wobbled there. He almost was able to snake this in. Almost had that choke in. Oh. Yeah, frustrating round. It's got to be a frustrating round for CJ Jimenez or for Carlos Jimenez. Not able to get up. Finally gets stood up with 20 seconds left, which maybe has been questionable. I mean, Shane Torres was throwing some punches from that position. Yeah, of all the times to stop, that was kind of a weird time. Could have been cool before. Yeah. Oh. All right, round three. The CJ faithful looking for that big moment. Yeah, Carlos Jimenez looking a little gassed here. Cannot let Shane Torres get the takedown here. He's got to get this. Got to keep this on the feet. Let's go. 
Both guys, Alex, most likely need to win this round to win this fight. Yeah, I'd say so. Ends up on top, albeit temporary. Carlos doing a good job of getting that underhook. Looks like he's still going to get taken down. He's got to get his butt out. He's got to get his hips out far. He definitely doesn't want to get both those legs trapped. <laughs> Trying to soften him up with his knees. See if something opens up. There's Jimenez. Yeah, we gotta give it up to these fans. They've been non-stop. <laughs> yeah, these guys are gonna sound like us by the time they're finished. <laughs> yeah. Now, Carlos Jimenez hitting with those knees on that side, undoubtedly trying to get Shane to drop that hip on that side just a little bit so he can clear that arm yeah. for the Kimura. Craft to try to set it up. Black belt Shane Torres looking to put a big stamp here in round three. And it's pulling Shane Torres down into half guard. A little over two minutes left here in the third and final round. Shane Torres on top. In half guard in the best punching position from the ground, in my opinion. Not throwing many punches, though, Alex. No, he's not. Yep, I mean, still quite a bit of time left. I wouldn't be surprised to see another referee stand up. Yeah, if Shane doesn't start throwing some punches or, you know, trying to improve his position here, he's going to referee Joe Solis definitely going to send them up. is trying to clear that leg. And if he can get, if Carlos can get his right knee under Shane's left knee and then throw his left leg all the way over, he could invert on a good leg locking position. I don't know if that's what he's going for. He's trying to beat him up from bottom open guard. He's got to get that right leg all the way over the hip. And his left leg all the way over the body if he wants to try to attack that. And Shane Torres is working. Yeah, Carlos Jimenez just you know, kind of gave up a decent position, went right into the, probably the worst case scenario yeah. with this much time left. Does he have anything left in here to get the finish under 10 seconds? To the judges' scorecards, we go again. Wow. Man, I, I hate to say it, but I just think, I, I think Carlos Jimenez kind of let that one go there at the end. I think he was just too tired. Uh, you know, yeah. Shane Torres probably won that round, which probably won him the fight. So I would have a pretty clear 29 28 decision win for Shane Torres, uh, I would imagine. But. Like you said, Alex, Carlos Jimenez is always an entertaining fight.
Shane Torres. Yeah. Having to deal with those wrestlers for most of the fight, just laying on is tough, man. It just zaps everyone's energy. Crazy exchange in the second round. Look, credit to Shane. He did exactly what he needed to do. Negate that offense. Yeah, that fight was very close to being finished there at the end of the second round. That, I mean, the story of the fight is the wrestling of Shane Torres. You know, he got to some decent positions here. He finished the fight in the mount, landed some good punches, took the back here. You know, a little more time. He might have had that rear naked choke. It was very, very tight. All right, Wayne is inside. Let's see how the judges scored it. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for the decision. Brought to you by Howler Head Whiskey. All three judges score the fight 29 28, declaring your winner by unanimous decision, Shane Torres. Congratulations to Shane Torres moving that record to five and three. Gets a big win in hostile enemy territory here in Houston over CJ Carlos Jimenez. All right, time for our main event. Let's meet our first fighter. Please welcome Eduardo Alvarado to the blue corner. Eduardo Alvarado, 10 and seven record. First time inside the Fury FC cage, coming over from Mexico. Is on a one fight win streak. Michael, he did miss weight for the main event. Came in at 137.8. But he and John Giannis worked it out. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad they did. Uh, you know, John Giannis is always game to fight. You know, he's one of our favorite fighters here. Another one of those guys at the top of the heap at the 135 division. And there seems to be a very clear line in this weight class. There seems to be the, the 10 at the top, and then there's a bunch of guys in the middle, and then there's 10 at the bottom. But those 10 at the top are at the top of the heap of anybody at the 135 division. And that includes both of these guys. Eduardo Alvarado, of course, we said it earlier, you got to get your weight under control. But you're in the main event. John Giannis agreed to fight. We have a fight, Raheel. Has a big win over former UFC fighter Roman Salazar. Has been fighting since 2014. Has a good kickboxing background, so we know he's going to be keeping it standing. Excited to watch Alvarado here for the first time inside the Fury FC cage. He is inside. Let's meet his opponent. Please welcome to the red corner, John Giannis. John Giannis, the juice is loose. Seventh time inside the Fury FC cage, riding a three fight win streak over Mo Miller, Tiago Macedo, and Casey Jones. Yeah, that might be the top three fight win streak in this division. I mean, that's very, very tough. Tiago Macedo, a high, high level black belt. Casey Jones, we know Casey Jones, always a game fighter, but the biggest one is the split decision victory against Mo Miller in his last fight. Yeah, and beyond that, he's got that split decision. I want to say loss over Smotherman, right? But man, fight of the year, one of the best fights you will ever see. In MMA, period. And, uh, man, his his knockout win over Gabby Echeverry kind of put him on the map. I had no clue who he was until that happened. That may have been his debut. I forget now. But, I mean, he's just had banger after banger. Never an easy fight. Headlining tonight's Challenger Series card. This guy's style easily makes fight fans. Yeah, he was 7-3 and three as an amateur, and, you know, so 10 fights as an amateur, his, seven, his eighth fight as a pro, so 17 fights in. Got a big-time upside winning record, and you know, this guy's the real deal, Raheel. Yeah, you know, after that Cam Smotherman fight, we were talking about it. It's his fourth time inside Fury FC. He was trying to get that record to 2-2 two and two and just kind of stay alive in this division. Comes off and rips three in a row. And now here he is, five and two, 
we see our tail to tape brought to my only fans. Even on the reach, slight height advantage for John Giannis. And again, as we mentioned, 137.8 Eduardo Alvarado misses weight. Let's get our official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest brought to you by OnlyFans is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury FC Bantamweight Division. And it is your main event of the evening. This fight is sanctioned by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation. Your judges at cage side, Danielle Guevara, Chance Williams, and Gino Garcia. And now Houston, Texas, make some noise because the time for talk is over. It's time to unleash the fury. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. This mixed martial artist stands five feet, seven inches tall, and he weighed in officially at 137.8 pounds. Fighting out of Tijuana, Baja, California, he holds a professional record of 10 wins, six losses. Here is Eduardo Torero Alvarado. And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This freestyle fighter stands five feet, seven inches tall, and he weighed in at 135.8 pounds. Fighting out of Floyd Data, Texas, his professional record stands at five wins, only two defeats. Here is John, the Juice, Giannis. And now referee Jeff Rexwell with your final main event instructions. Commands at all times and protect yourself at all times. Touch him up, back to your corner. All right, here we go. Main event, Fury Challenger Series 8. Eduardo Alvarado, blue gloves. The Juice Giannis in the red gloves. Giannis really doesn't mix it up too much. He mostly just kind of boxes, which is awesome. I think that's where he's got so many fight fans. I mean, stays southpaw, and you'll just see him. He just diligently tries to set up his left hand and his right hook. Doesn't really utilize a lot of wrestling unless the person forces him to. That looks like that first leg kick that landed for Alvarado may have hurt Giannis a little bit. Both guys highly skilled. Both guys trying to find their range. Not going to get in a hurry here in the first round. Yeah, definitely two fighters who will take their time a little bit more. Mm. Hard low kick there from Giannis. Wow, John's been heavy on those leg kicks so far. Ooh. Oh, nice high kick there from Giannis. That got through. Even though Alvar Alvarado's hand was up, I mean, that one still did some damage. Nice right hook there from Giannis. Yeah, I'm undoubtedly those ears are ringing right now, yeah. Alex. I poke on that exit. <laughs> saying I'm good. Let's go. Let's go. I 
Bama's continuing to find a home for those kicks, whether it be the leg kicks, the you know the straight kicks right up the middle, or the head kick we saw earlier. Nice left hand by Giannis. Yeah, Alvarado, he sits down pretty heavy on his strikes. Be honest, a little bit quicker. There's a headbutt uh, uh, or an eye poke. Mm. Yeah, that must have I, I think that may have been like I know. I think that may have been a headbutt. A headbutt, right, because he was rubbing his temple. at it. Jeff Rex Road talking to Alvarado. We get a, a replay look. Yep, little headbutt. I mean, Giannis stepped in for an uppercut, hook, 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 and Alvarado stepped in at the same time. I wouldn't, call, I wouldn't even call that Giannis's fault. It was kind of a mutual, mutual accident. really short-handed on his flurries he's not like following through this punches it's like he's keeping his elbows just in front of him like squarely and the punches just aren't I mean you see Giannis is rocking his shoulders and he's really throwing through his punches he's not seeing that from Alvarado right yeah. now maybe Alvarado doesn't want to like you know create any extra openings to Giannis because he knows Giannis is super tight in the pocket but no I see what you mean I'll tell you um, Alvarado does have a cut on that right eye and may, may have been from that headbutt See a little blood running down the cheek of Alvarado. Good left hand there from Giannis. Oh, both guys exchange. Oh, oh. Nice little lead hook over the top there from Alvarado. I mean, that took the equilibrium off of Giannis. That's a strange reaction. Because it was not a very big punch. But that's sometimes it's all it takes. Oh. Again, just like most of our fights tonight, two very hungry guys. Just standing and boxing. Yes, yeah. standing and throwing down. Near the end of the round. <laughs> nice hey. round. I think Giannis takes that, maybe volume-wise. I think he just threw a lot more than Alvarado did. Every time Alvarado would throw one or two, Giannis threw three or four. Yeah, and if you're looking at damage, I mean, obviously, Alvarado's got a cut on the eye, and, you know, you can see it definitely wearing the damage. Oh, you know what? Alvarado did hit that weird little punch that, I don't know if it made Giannis slip or, or what. One thing about missing weight, so there was a, a fight in the UFC recently, um, Cameron Simon, he was like an undefeated young kid from South Africa, fights this dude. Dude busts weight by four pounds, guy beats him. The guy also fought Raul Rosas Jr., beats him, but busted weight thin. There's not enough of a penalty for guys busting weight. One solution that I had heard was start them in the first round minus a point. Oh. That would actually be interesting. It really would. Or maybe like after the scorecards were rendered, didn't take a point away. You know? That would that would really change everything. It really would. Yeah. Because the financial stuff, yeah, like it's look, especially on this level, it does suck losing that money and negotiating a a price, right? But you can still win the fight. I mean, e even like in the UFC, if I fight a debuter and he busts weight, that's an extra, what, two grand? That's nothing. That's not worth a potential loss, yeah. you know? Whereas if you fight a guy with 20 fights, that's a potential 20 grand. Then we're talking some real numbers, sure. you know? So, But that's so, you know, relative to the scenario. Whereas here, you're getting, what, an extra 100 bucks? Is it worth the disadvantage? 
By the way, this fight is scheduled to go three rounds. Our Fury main events usually go five, but at Challenger Series, we go three. Just want to throw that in there. Ooh. Nice, nice red hook there from Giannis. Ooh, good body kick. Good right hand there from Alvarado. I figured we'd just get a four-ounce glove boxing match in this main event. That's what we're getting right now. Nice body work from Giannis. And Giannis just continues to land with that left hand. Oh, nice. Whoa. Both guys kind of opened up there. Alvarado's complaining about something that Giannis is doing. Yeah. yeah, I think he's complaining about a headbutt, but it's not like Giannis is, like, blasting heads. Giannis is stepping in to throw a combo as Alvarado's stepping in. I mean... Like, right there, they both stepped in at the same time. You, you, you can't complain when you're 50% of that fault, you know? And this is some high-level striking. Nice overhand right there from Giannis. Giannis continues to look for that high kick. Like the way that landed earlier. Yeah, oh, Giannis is pretty crafty with not really selling his shots before he throws them. Very little telegraph action from him. There's a good front kick from Giannis and a really good nice little dig to the body there from Alvarez. I'm sorry, Alvarado. Big overhand right from Giannis. Alvarado's starting to find his spot here. Giannis are the quicker hands of the two fighters. But Alvarado anticipating very, very well. Able to slip a lot of those punches. background on display here for Alvarado. Yana is, of course, so comfortable on his feet. Yeah, Giannis has a lot of time and reps in this Fury cage, just boxing it out. I don't think Giannis was even thinking about taking this <laughs> yeah. to the mat until <laughs> Alvarado said, I'm going to try it. He stuffed it and said, watch this. <laughs> it's almost like that opening was too yeah. big to not to take, right? Man, Giannis pretty very well-rounded. Yeah, mixing it up well here in this fight. 28 seconds left in the second round. Giannis continuing to do damage, but Alvarado answering a lot with some shots of his own. Landing a big left hand there. Hey -oh. All right, final round of the night of coming. Big thanks to everyone for joining us. If you're still watching, we appreciate it. It's been a fun night of fights.
We had the Fury FC debut of Anthony Kassar. He got the big W. Yeah, we had some insane fights go the distance. Our first fight, there was a finish with eight seconds left in the third round. And then decisions from then on out. Some really close ones, some heavy wrestling ones. We've seen a little bit of everything here at Fury Challenger Series 8. We are back in action in November. Yeah, the four, the fifth, I believe. Yeah, fourth November fifth in 5th San Antonio. In San Antonio, we go back to Cowboys Dance Hall the for fifth, that yeah. one. I saw that. Yeah. And then November twelfth, back here in Houston. So we got Challenger Series nine and ten, and then we've got December third coming up as well. So three cards. Yeah, finishing strong at the end of the year. We'll see if I get my voice back for <laughs> <laughs> November fifth. I'd say a lot of that depends on how long this Astros and Rangers series goes. I mean, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and also, we can't be bringing my Texas Longhorns to Houston anymore. <laughs> Was that the game yesterday? A lot of fun. Ooh, Giannis, that big left hand. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've never seen one of these Fury fights live, you need to try to make it out to one. This is, uh, you know, the production is great. The venues are awesome. Uh, the fans are always electric. Uh, you know, these are these are not just normal fighters. These are, you know, legitimate UFC. Uh, you know, some are ready for the UFC now. Some are on their way. But these are UFC caliber fighters that you're watching. And, you know, these are definitely future superstars in the making here. And maybe two of those right here. Yeah, and then, and then from an amateur show perspective, like I, I challenge anyone to show me a better produced or more tolerant amateur show. I cannot. My, my boy Joe Hendershot, he's 5-1. and one, He's fighting for the Fury featherweight belt in December. And I told him, I was like, hey, this is maybe the most prestigious amateur show in the world. Like, it's genuinely a good, a good championship to have. Yeah, typically when they have these pro-ams, Alex, they treat the amateurs way different than they do the pros. And here at Fury... You, the only difference you can tell is the break in action from the from, you know, from the undercard to the main event. Yeah. I mean, it's so they and can change the, the cameras clock, over. That's it. Yeah. Not even yeah. Everything is exactly the same. Even watching our amateurs, you know, to start the show, so, some of them were debuting and looked like pros. I mean, yeah. really was cool. I was listening to Mia Gra on the Fury Unleashed podcast earlier this week. She was talking about some show that, you know, another promotion she was at. There was, like, sewage water in the <laughs> locker room. It was just terrible. It was dusty everywhere. You never get that here. It's always top tier. Yeah, it's top tier. It's educated fans. It's, you know, a ton of local people, but also people that you would never normally see because, you know, a lot of promotions, if you're Houston-based, 95% of your fighters are from Houston. Yeah. This is a good example tonight on this card. And we have people from everywhere, all over the country. Yeah. yeah. Three Mexican fighters on our main card. Yeah, I've seen some of the shiftiest stuff one time. Ooh, some good. fights, different different state. There was no uh, no set of stairs walking up to the cage. Oh so they stacked crates. <laughs> and then guys would get knocked out and be all staggered and walk down these swaying crates. It was the least Oh my god. It was the least professional thing I've ever seen in my life. They're making fighters do the crate challenge. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Early in the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> Man, we had a lot of free time as a society. <laughs> we were doing the crate challenge. <clears throat> Giannis, that overhand right lands right on the forehead of Alvarado. Yeah, Bro. both both guys just so technically sound, both durable. They're throwing a lot, they're landing a lot, but they're just not able to do a lot of damage to one another. And you see kind of what you were talking about earlier, Alex, both these guys are kind of leaning with their head. They're kind of leaning into the pocket waiting for one to throw so they can counter, and neither one of them throw, and that's where you get those head clashes yeah, sometimes. Yeah. A little over a minute left here in round three. A final round of the night. Final round for this fight, John Giannis, Eduardo Alvarado. 
talk about a fighter forged in fury fire. I mean, Giannis has been in the mix so much with so many good guys. Got a good winning record. Main eventing now. She's fighting a vet. Man, beautiful combinations being thrown by both guys. But Alvarado is just so crisp. Yeah, I think Alvarado took over in this third round a little bit with his volume. Very unofficially, super close. I got Giannis up two. Rounds one and two. Maybe Alvarado here in the third, but this is one of those fights. It's been the trend tonight. Fights have been razor thin. Battles of attrition. All right. It's only fitting that we go back to the judges' scorecards for the final fight of the night. A lot of respect here between two warriors. Yeah, that shows you the caliber of fighter John Giannis is. Uh, Eduardo Alvarado, his last win was over a UFC veteran. So, I mean, you can see this. I think you're right, Alex. I think there's a two rounds to one uh, Giannis win, decision win, but I mean, could very well be a split decision uh, for either guy, but you know, the fight wasn't without some adversity for both guys. Had a couple of headbutts, some eye posts. Both guys landing really, really well. I mean, this is basically a boxing match with four ounce gloves on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, very evenly matched. You see Alvarado with a close slip there. This is the only takedown attempt, really. There was two takedown attempts. One from Alvarado, and then immediately the next one came from Giannis. Giannis the more successful of the two, but didn't do much with it. Got back to the feet. Nice exchanges for the rest of the fight. Here we are with another decision, Raheel. Man, it's been that kind of night. It's starting off really hot. There's a fun fight between Javier Cepeda and Justin Lagoria. Ooh. And then, since then, we've been uh, making the judges earn their keep. So a lot of decisions. Yeah, and this was not, these were not 30-27 fights. No. Every one of these fights was very, very close. Could have won, could have been anybody's, anybody's fight. Just uh, you know, one of those things where tonight the matchups were on point. Yep. Richard Burmaster did it again. We talk about him every car. These are excellent fights. All right, let's head inside to Wayne Leggett. To Ladies and gentlemen, sport. after three rounds of combat, we go to the judges scorecards for your decision. Brought to you by OnlyFans. Judge Danielle Guevara scores the fight 29-28. Giannis. Judge Chance Williams scores the fight 29-28, Alvarado. And Judge Gino Garcia scores the fight 29-28, declaring your winner by split decision, John the Juice Giannis. Congratulations to John. Here's Alex with you the winner. I'm here with the winner, John Giannis. John, we've seen you in like war after war here in the Fury Cage. Man, that fight was close. That fight was competitive. We had you up rounds one and two. How did you think the fight was going to be scored when that final bell rang? Man, I had it 30 27. Uh, he caught me <laughs> with a few good shots, but I thought my full work. And really, I was landing strikes. Not everything was significant, but even my significant, um, my, uh, just my touches were a lot more than his significant punches as well. And I had significant shots. So I, will, I thought, you know, it was 30 27. Yeah, man, your volume was excellent. Um, technique was sharp, as always. Again, you're always putting on such wars here. Six and two now. Most fights in Fury, all against vets. What do you want to do next? Man, you know what? I wasn't going to say nothing, but hey, ever since I got into this promotion, I feel like I'm undefeated. I don't feel like anybody's killed me yet. I don't feel like anybody's beat me yet. I, feel, I, I come into this cage. When I came into this cage tonight, I say, you know what? Right now I'm 7 and 0. After this, I made a no. I've been posting it all through Facebook. I'm still undefeated. I feel like I got the belt back in February. Y'all know that's what I want next. Fury, let's make it happen. I'd love to see that title fight. Your winner, John Giannis. Congratulations to John Yannis.
gets a big win, moves that record to six and two, and that will do it for us here at Fury FC. Sound. Thank you so much for That's watching. That's going to close it out for Fury Challenger Series. And our whole production team, Amber Hilbrum Zonley. We will talk to you next time.